Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew. Welcome to Wednesday. This is where we play new games on classic consoles at 60 frames a second. Make sure you're watching at 60. This is Pixel. We have a he mascot is, today. He's here. Oh, he's oh, gone. gone. <laughs> For a beautiful moment, we just had a him. a brief second that you have to just enjoy while it's happening and then celebrate that it did happen. <laughs> uh, we're joined by Erlen today on the Wednesday, of course. Um, we've got three games today, three homebrews we have not played before, two that are brand new, and we also have an unboxing. Oh, shit. Okay, that's good. Whatever that is. We'll find we'll out, see. man. I guess that's the point of the unboxing. It is. Ideally you don't know a what's surprise for everyone. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know what's in it. Um, if it's not it, well, it ruins a bunch of plans, but, <laughs> and then it's just something else, but it's, it's, I it says who it's from, and there's only one thing I'm expecting okay, from cool. it. So, so they get, uh, we're going to be unboxing. We're going to be playing Power Off, uh, Shield in Color, and Bass Fishing Tournament. There you go. Fuck yeah. We're going to be catching some fish. I can't say bass fishing is on the top <laughs> priority of, of, of you no. know my, me wanting to just do things, but no. I'm excited to do it digitally and not have yes, to sir. you know fish a real bass. You know, put some hooks through some mouths. Ugh. No. We'll do it digitally. Um, I want to thank the Twitch subscribers, Boyle Lovers, Census Taker, Coconut81, Dietrich Harms, Gretem's Ground Trooper, Whoa. I was supposed to, Johnny WC23, Carl G, Croco2600, Matthew, uh, what was the new name? Matthews J.G. Santos, uh, M.K. Smith, Mr. Fix, Muddy Funster, RC7E, Repentless VG, Sir Catleg, Spartan581, Spiceware, The D-Train37, Tiki Dan K, the most subscribers we've ever had. Holy Thank you, shit, man. Everyone. I feel so thankful. I don't recognize half of those names. I and like that's so many. I feel I feel really lucky that like people want to come and watch us just play games. Yeah, it's, support us so it's much. It's still mind blowing to me that anybody <laughs> would show up. So it's yeah. wild to think that like there's the people who've been here since the beginning and then there's yeah. like new people. Like I don't even know what to say or feel about that. It's just it's, like it's incredible. Like we could be broadcasting to the void. Yeah. To, to nothing out there. Just nobody listening. Listening, but thankful is definitely the best word I can think yeah. of you know it's like thank you all for kind of coming every week and enjoying what we do yeah and also like we don't have the spooky vibes uh, today <laughs> of, of Halloween yeah that was fun if you missed our last broadcast it was uh what are you doing just making sure it wasn't my jacket <laughs> the cat is going crazy we um we did a Halloween episode last episode did a, a nice uh, color grading yeah. on it it worked out really well that gave me an cool. idea James because oh. when you get in the new camera we can yeah. put it in log and we can do oh. a LUT that I can design in Da Vinci That's so true. and we can I can actually do a very specific LUT that That's will make this true. this room look like fucking Just dynamite pristine That's what I do for a living is I color yeah. correct movies so I'll be able to apply some of that but this camera that James has is not really capable of that no, but the one we're thinking of getting will be like it's designed specifically to do it's that for video this one's for pictures that does video and the other one's for video, for video that for sure. also happens to do pictures it's yeah. kind of like the video model of the sony um but yeah. no i'm really stoked for that I and mean, we might really seriously step up our game when that happens oh yeah it'll look really good um and you can support the show and get your name on that list uh subscribe for free if you link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch Prime and then click subscribe here, there's a bunch of people uh, in the chat but not chatting. Uh, it's <laughs> that's okay, friends. P P P. I don't know how to say. He that was name. there last time, or she? Philha, Philha, Philha. I don't know. Uh, I supposed to ground, ground trooper, trooper uh, Thomas. Yes, yeah, man. Yeah, hell yeah. Thrust. Um, and all got? the other people. And this suspicious zero page and, homebrew who keeps typing every fucking second. <laughs> Repentless VG just said <laughs> hello. And I supposed to just resubscribe. Oh shit, I supposed to thank, thank so much. Thank you so dude. much. Oh yeah. No, his name was on there, but he just resubscribed. Ah, thank cool, you. man. Tier one for 10 months now. Thank you so much. Damn. Oh yeah, 10 month subscriber. Um, so I have a poll question, but we're going to get to that in a little bit. Um, because it relates to the unboxing. Um, so I have ordered the awards for the 2019 Atari Homebrew Awards. I just got the art, art artwork proofs back and they look great. 
just like last year's. Damn, that's, I had this that on my desk because I was looking at last year's because I just redesigned it for this year because it can't say 2018 on it. That's just coming up fast too, man. I felt like yeah. yesterday we did the awards, but it's like not, <laughs> it's honestly like when, when was it February, January? Early February last year. We're going to try and do it in late January this year. Um, but yeah, it's going to say 2019. It's going to yeah. say Atari Homebrew Awards. This one just said 2000. 18 Atari Awards, so I'm just changing it up a little bit, and um, oh, did I change that? Oh boy, yeah, I better make sure I got that right because it says celebrating the best in Atari 2600 homebrew, and it should say selling the celebrating the best in Atari homebrew, and I think I do. Let me just check. It. Oh yeah, because it's not. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not totally necessarily 2600. No, it's it's encompassing all all the Atari yeah, so. um, consoles now. How many categories has Galagon won? Well, it, it hasn't happened yet. Cause but 2019 that's a style. fucking good question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it, it would be entered in a, brunt, a bunch of them. It'll be nominated for it's a bunch. Gonna be, that's certainly going to be like the, the one you to know, watch. When, when Lord of the Rings was doing its Oscar run at the end. Yeah, the, it was, the, the, the Return of the King. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Galagon is kind of like the Lord of the Rings in that Oscar year. Yeah. It'll be like everything but best actor. We'll see. <laughs> best actor, yeah. Um, or Titanic, but that was weird, man. When you look back on Titanic, it's not like a really like culturally significant. Does movie. anybody talk about that too much anymore? Well, once in a while. Yeah, it, but it's weird that that had such a powerful impact. It's just the right time and the right story. That's and... James Cameron, though, man. You think about like know, yeah, Avatar. It's... You think about Terminator. Like you think about everything he's done. He just has. Avatar's a pile of garbage. But but again, it's this weird <laughs> thing but, where it's like these movies that are not that amazing all of a sudden like are like the highest grossing, you know. He, he just yeah, has a way of He has of a magic catching. touch for sure. Yes, uh, Militant Buddha says uh, it's not really that great of a movie, just good effects and nudity. That's right. And it, it had good effects for the time. Oh, fuck yeah, Very, man. very good effects. Um, but no, it's not. It's a long ass movie. It's like three hours. Yeah, I think it's close to that. I think so. It's yeah. wild. Uh, let's get back on, uh, video games. <laughs> <laughs> Militant Buddhists, yeah, man. Um, my Atari 2600 RGB update, fixing it. Um, Darcy and I, um, finally, uh, got, st got to sit down and, and examine it with, with the, uh, with the tools. And, uh, we have isolated the, f at least the first issue. Hopefully it's the only issue with it. Um, the voltage regulator on it was outputting way lower oh. than it was supposed to. Um, f first, I did some testing, and I posted it in the Atari Age forums. Um, and then somebody said, oh, make sure you check the power plug as well. Um, and this is the power plug that we've been using to play games for a year and a half. And, and then I did check it, and it wasn't working. All of a sudden... Um, it was working before. Like I was play using this to power another Atari. But now this, this. Now guy. this one it gave it up, so it died. I, d I don't know. So oh, I plugged compounding in compounding issues, man. Yeah. So I plugged in a working one that I tested working with. Tested the output from it. Uh, it's nine volts at half, half a uh, an amp. Thanks for joining us, twenty six hundred. Welcome, twenty six hundred. We've got one of his games today. Um, I'm 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 enjoying the coffee as well. Um, so I made sure the one uh, that we're testing with worked uh, and plugged it in and we're getting about two and a half volts out of the uh, voltage regulator inside on the board instead of five and 11. So it's definitely not enough. And this voltage regulator is an upgrade from the original that came with the RGB kit. It's got a capacitor on it. So I'm going to uh, message the guy who makes the RGB kit and ask him, do I need another one of yours? Because it is very, very upgraded and special. Or can I use a standard one to power? And I'm guessing because there's so much work put into this, this little upgraded one with a capacitor and a bunch of little yeah. chips, that he's going to say, no, you, you do need the upgraded one to run all the proper power. Because the capacitor would level out the power input, so it has a constant, definite, perfect feed of power. Yeah. Um, so, um, and that guy's uh, Tim Worthington, so I'm going to have to message him very soon. I've just been inundated with work, um, trying to get a distributor for the film. Yeah, man. So, hopefully that'll work out soon. Um, 
Some big news, Boulder Dash is getting a re-release. Fuck yeah, man. That's great news. That's a badass game, and that's cool yeah. to hear that that's what's so, going down. So it, it had a first run of 250 a long time ago, and they sold out over about a year and a half. Yeah. Um, so not a super quick sellout, but... And that was the limit of what they were able to make. Like, they couldn't... They had an agreement with First Star Software that that's, that's all they could make is 250. So now the, um, the company has been sold, First Star Software, or at least the Boulder Dash license has been sold to a new company. Oh. And um, Andrew Davey and Thomas Yench have um, been talking with the new company, and they've come to agreement that they are uh, going to be able to sell unlimited yes, new versions man. of Boulder Dash. Dude, for that game, you want to buy that, that like, that package and just read the pamphlet of the story of trying to make that <laughs> so game. good that's even worth just the price to just now they be can able add to, to it well yeah man to they a, can add to the story because and... seriously that was like i was kind of like oh it's a game you know i'm dumb ape like i don't know shit <laughs> and then like i'm reading about how much these guys worked for like almost a decade truly yeah and the pains and the things in supporting and each downs, other and like yeah. and so for any programmers out there man if you need a little bit of you know a behind the scenes <laughs> story of what it's like to do a game like holy shit is that yeah and, and so it's cool that that'll get re-released so that'll be something that people can hold in their hands and actually read and, that was yeah and 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 play the game again because you can't without that cartridge you can't actually play the game it doesn't exist on rom yeah that was for me one of the highlights of the show was just watching you play that game and reading uh, the story of how hard these people work to produce this thing it was not a trivial task oh uh, no um, I'm actually reading a book right now. I'm about halfway through it. It's called Blood, Sweat, and Pixels. <laughs> and I think I brought it up before. And it's take the story that's in the Boulder Dash manual and apply it to 12 other companies. And yeah. that's the book. Reading through the trials and tribulations of getting a game out. Th these Most of them are not independent games. They're very well-known big games like you'd recognize probably all of them actually yeah <laughs> or at least uh 80 of those games is this the one that had pillars of eternity in it uh, i think so wrong. that's a cool game I'm yeah just... um and it's just and it is it's fascinating reading um you know in the game doesn't go well or testing doesn't go well or it actually gets reviewed badly or um they lose personnel or you know it has so much to it and it's really really interesting read so i highly highly recommend that book if you're interested in video game development or or just reading behind the scenes about what goes into a video game it went for f over five hundred dollars lately oh my god that's way yeah. too much so it's really well, that's, great that's when something just becomes a collector's item yeah. and when you spend five hundred dollars on a game you're it's just an putting investment it on, and also that point. you're probably not playing it you're putting it on the shelf no. you know and that and that's makes me sad you know it's like people who get these beautiful guitars but never play them you know it's like i don't know yeah. we, we sometimes i think equate value to things in terms of just their monetary sense but i do feel like games instruments things like that they're meant to be played you know they're meant to be experienced to a point if it's like an ancient thing that's going to fall apart in your hands obviously maybe no. not but you um know. but yeah games games are meant to be played and, and or like been a camera a... like a vintage camera you want to take photos with that you know you want to yeah. like experience this thing you know blood sweat and pixels yeah so like instead of someone type that tears. in the chat real quick yeah um blood Please. sweat and, and pixels. pixels yeah so that I way it's it up in, down picked it up in portland when i was there um so thank you thomas um for or put for putting the, uh, that extra effort into getting the game more into more people's hands and maybe those prices will come down actually they probably won't even sell anymore yeah unless they're speculating on price increases or there might be like maybe if you wanted to like not bone those people out you could just like do like a like i guess a new a new thing so that you know differentiates the packaging oh, they, or, they will yeah. so that way there's like still some stuff so yeah they've, they've already said um, oh dude thanks for it we had three people throw that up there i appreciate oh, that that's um, awesome said boulder dash has long been a favorite of many video game enthusiasts it's one of the most successful longest running game titles has appeared on many many platforms over its 30 year history including the atari 2600 recently bbg entertainment uh purchased all rights to boulder dash starting a new chapter in the game's history in response to the extremely high demand bbg entertainment thomas yench and Andrew Davies have agreed to a new release of the game with improvements and bug fixes. So it will be a different game 
not too different, but improvements. Um, these changes have now been completed. So these they've already upgraded the game. Wow. Uh, we're very pleased to announce this new improved Boulder Dash for the Atari 2600 will be available early next year. So early 2020 is when it's trying... Uh, coming out uh, and Thomas says right there we're trying to get a significantly lower price but it won't be easy well appreciate that man that's yeah. awesome for for the people out there um, but yeah we all get that it's uh, these are no negotiations and you know. yeah they want I mean the, the rights holders want their cut they that's want right. to make money off of it um, uh, the plan is for general sale no limits we aim to preserve the desirability of the original the new one won't be quite so fancy in terms of uh, manual box and contents. That's okay, the way cool. they can uh, lower the price. Uh, and about two hours ago, uh, they, uh, somebody asked, will they be sold here on Atari Age? Likely, but the fine details are not worked out yet. So, I mean, they still have like uh, many months before yeah. it's going to come out. So there's a lot, a lot of things to figure out before then. Well, when there's more, I mean, that's the thing is when there's more than one stakeholder, when there's several stakeholders, yeah. in any instance, it's a big it balancing just act. takes time. It's just, it's just like, you know, things take time, you know, and it's rare to get everyone in the same room. So yeah, we get it, man. Um, that's exciting though, <laughs> that, that there's some po progress forward, you know? Yes. Easter egg still in it? Thrust says, sure. sure. Or he might have, or he might have meant <laughs> like yes something no? else. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I don't know, but yeah, it's uh Oh, but no, he's not answering that question. Uh, but much easier to get. Well, yeah, because it'll be available for anyone. It's unlimited. There's no panic to buy it. Yeah. It's going to be cheaper than buying one off of eBay now. Um, and one of the real great. benefits is it's actually a good game. I mean, that really helps oh, a lot. Yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> it's very challenging. Uh, we're not through it yet. Yeah, um, man. It's, it's very, very challenging. So it has a lot of replayability. Very fun. And you can play the levels many different ways Absolutely. it's not like a straight path it's not like you have to jump over this and that's you can only I, jump it one way and, and i think it has a pretty broad appeal for a lot of age groups i think that if you were to take someone who's 10 11 12 years old it's throw them throw in front of that <laughs> see how they yeah. do i bet you they would have a lot of fun with it because i mean it's challenging but i think kids these days are like Up devouring stuff and games are not challenging anymore that's right. so it's like it differentiates itself it'd be like yeah. it would be like hey little johnny you want to see what it was like in my day boulder dash you motherfucker. Want a hard game? <laughs> yeah you know, we, we don't none of this bejeweled shit. Let's do some <laughs> Boulder Dash, you or, know. You know, or a Nintendo <laughs> game where you can never die. Yeah, you, you just kind of get put in a bubble and sent back two yeah. steps. You and just wander keep going. around. Yeah. Um, so there's a a new, another new cartridge coming out. Oh shit! Multi cart, not multi cart, but it's a new cartridge style coming out called the Plus Cart for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. This one's very different. Um, it has the possibility of opening up the Atari 2600 Ooh. to a whole new world, including an online store where you can download games from. Jesus Christ. And massive multiplayer online gaming. Fuck, man. I'm <laughs> fucking in if this is real. That's hilarious. Yeah. It's, uh, you can it, log into the server and play with the five other people who are <laughs> yeah no well, it's a pretty big uh, community you just plan the time oh you'd have time. to no but having the potential to like because i think a lot of you guys are in different places that's the reality yeah. is that this community is not like you know you can't walk down the street and go hey paul you wanna you know but but you're all connected through atari age and the internet so being able to potentially play with people would be oh the organizations there they can that make would it be happen. fucking wild man so the atari 2600 plus cart is based on the robin edward Uno Kart 2600, which we've we've talked about before. The Plus Kart has no SD card, which it should, but it doesn't. Um, but an ESP8266 to connect to a local Wi-Fi network and the internet. My cat's going crazy. Yeah, man, he thinks there's. Oh, there's a spring. Okay. Okay. Um, the Plus Kart downloads the ROM files from a server in the internet called the Plus Store. The way this is done is similar to the way the Uno 2600 loads ROMs from the FAT file system on the SD card mm -hmm. while the VCS is performing a wait routine in the RAM. Additionally, the Plus Cart has one more ROM emulator routine to emulate online ROMs called Plus ROM. In the first bytes of such a Plus ROM, uh, the path and the backend host name or IP address has to be encoded as strings both terminated by a slash zero. Sending and receiving bytes to the host does not need a wait routine in the VCS RAM, obviously. That's more advanced in information. 
Um, so now all kind of online ROMs, games, chat clients, mail clients, web browser, um, MMOGs, etc. should be possible with the Atari 2600 VCS. Thank you, Grenums, for resubscribing. Yeah, I did. 12 months. You hit a year. Thank you so much. It's... Uh... Um, and he posted November 1st, the project source code is released, uh, even if it needs more cleanup. Also, the Eagle PCB layouts for the Plus Card breakout board and the Gerber files for production are released online. I will finish two more prototype boards for beta tester and development. So if you're an experienced VCS programmer who wants to develop for a Plus ROM online game or slash app for the 2600, then send me a message about your idea and reference projects and I will send you one of the prototypes for free. Cool. So the big thing, the good thing, about, I guess, about 2600 games is they're so small. So if all the pipeline is fast enough, you should not even notice the game loading. It no. should be like instant. We're downloading it from the internet. Um, so there you go. There's a whole new world of uh, seriously Atari 2600 games that could usher us into uh, a new era of online connected gaming. Um, it is very, very interesting. Um, but it's just, just in its infancy right now. Um, so people will have to start developing for it if there's an interest in that. Maybe there isn't. Who knows? But it, the possibilities out there, especially for the multiplayer games. Well, oh my God, multiplayer, so and even if you can just connect with someone and play like online, yeah, I mean, two player games. It's 2019. Even. Like, we absolutely, I'm so happy someone figured this shit out because seriously, it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, especially for you guys who, you know, you can play with your friend from France if you live in like the States. Like, yeah. that would be incredible. I know that you could do that with an emulator on a yeah. PC before, play two player um, Atari 2600 games. But to play it on the original hardware Very multiplayer, special. I can see people retrofitting this to existing games, existing two-player games. Absolutely. So that's really, really cool. The only cool. thing that scares me a little bit about it is it's like that old Todd Howard, it just works thing. It's like, well, okay, this sounds like it's mm -hmm. promising like all this shit, but it's like, well... Is it like is it gonna all just work? Like, you yeah. know, that's the only scary part. And the other scary part I find about this is the lack of an SD card yeah. slot. Because how do you problem almost, solve? Almost sounds purposeful. I think so. Right. It's like no, you can't own the games. You can't run the games yourself. You have to use the store. That's the new. Which brings in monetization. Totally. Forced monetization, and that's the new so that's like, the eh. new model, man. You think about like what um, a PlayStation, uh, yeah, what is it? Play Four. PlayStation Plus is that what Plus? it's called? Oh, the Microsoft store. PlayStation Store, Microsoft Plus, yeah. Steam, um, yeah. all, all these places. Blizzard's got their own. Yeah, and and that old age question that I always bring up: What happens when the server is gone? It's a yeah. useless piece of hardware, and if you bought games, it's all gone. You have to confront the mortality of life. <laughs> but this <laughs> this is open source. Yeah, that's a good so point. So somebody could set up an alternative store, a free store, where none of that applies. And the problem and is is that all those servers we're talking about are multi-million dollar, billion dollar corporations. If this is a kind of a mom and pop thing, you know, yeah. will they actually have this, the ability to um, handle all the, all the traffic? Yeah, there's just some questions, but fuck, yeah. man, I'm not. That's just me, like <laughs> raining on like a beautiful fucking parade here. Exactly. Um, you know that stuff will just naturally get ironed out as it goes, right? And there's nothing saying that somebody couldn't make this with an SD card as well. Absolutely. So it can be modified. It's because the Uno card, I believe, is an open source. Yeah. Versions. It is actually. I remember that. Um, so somebody could just alter this and go, oh, that Wi-Fi part's really great. And we have an SD card, so yeah, you man. could load a game, I could load a game on both sides, and we connect to each other without a server in between. Or there can be a central chat point where we're all in the chat. You click on the person, and now you're playing with that person. Yeah. So there's so it's easier than having to type in your IP address and things all like that. that. Stuff. And, but so I it's remember, really cool. I remember playing on early multiplayer stuff in like 2001, man. Like, oh, it was like like early challenging then. <laughs> early stuff, and I remember like um, playing on like um, Battle.net for Diablo mm. 2, and we were playing on dial-up. So like if someone made a phone call, I would just get kicked out, and it would just be like I'd be <laughs> in the middle of like a raid about to get a great item. Yeah. 
So, like, if we were able to work through that era of, you know, we'll multiplayer stuff, like, for God damn it, we can get this going. Um, so there's a new tutorial um, about the CD, uh, CDFJ driver, uh, and that's uh, the driver that uh, Spiceware uh, is going to use. I don't know if he's made a game with it, um, but uh, Mappy uses it, Galaga uses it, and now Spiceware has posted a tutorial on making how to make games Beautiful. with this new driver. Um, those, are, those, those are two games that are clearly, you know, like, uh, you know, like, like very advanced, very advanced. Um, I, I don't want to say it, but in some ways, like the benchmark of like what you can do technically uh, pushing. The limits, um, yeah. So like, it's very cool that, you know, he's releasing stuff to lift, maybe lift up other people if that's yeah. what you're interested in. But at the end of the day, man, it's always needs to be fucking said that like a good game is a good game. Yeah. It doesn't Gameplay. fucking matter how many sprites are on the screen. Yeah. One button games are beautiful. This is just another tool in the toolbox. So he's posted his first uh, part. Um, it's kind of the layout of the uh, memory layout of where things yeah. go in it. So it's really interesting to read, even if you aren't a developer, just to see what goes into these games. So he's going to be posting it. Because he's done other tutorials, he did a collect tutorial, which was a, an assembly language tutorial. Um, so he, he does great tutorials. Um, so check it out on the Atari Age forums. More resources is better. Yes. So I am going to post the poll question now. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, it is in relation to the unboxing that we have here. Programming is an art. It fucking oh sure it is. is, man. Yeah. And design is an art too, right? Like, And those two, when they intersect, is, is powerful, powerful stuff. So here's the poll. Uh, would you buy an Atari 2600 slash 7800 FPGA HDMI console? Um, because this, in this box, is the Collector Vision Phoenix. Ooh. I think. <laughs> we'll find out. Which is an FPGA uh, ColecoVision console, which puts the original hardware on a pre-programmable chip, let's mm -hmm. say, that emulates hardware. So it's not an emulator, really. It's actually replicating perfectly the hardware um, of the original console. Um, so the uh, answers are never. I will never buy one. This is number one. It's original hardware until the VCS or me turns to dust. <laughs> and a lot of people are like that. They're like, no, I don't care about emulators. I like plugging my old school console, using everything original, plug it into an old school TV. Uh, number two is if it was reasonably priced. That means, you know, quite quite low. Yeah. Because they are very expensive. The FPGA and designing things and getting a case, it's a long process. And maybe there's not even a, a big enough market for it, but Collector Vision um, did it. They they did, um, so they thought there was a big enough market for it. Um, so good on them. Um, number three, definitely, we need to be prepared for the future, and that is an important uh, distinction to be made because we've dumped a lot of these games, almost all of them, for the twenty six hundred, so that we can play them forever. So when the cartridge turns to dust, yeah. It's not gone. Um, so we have that. But we don't have a hardware emulator to rep to replace the consoles when they go. I mean, it, there's at some point, it's going to be very far in the future, the last Atari 2600 is going to stop working. Yeah. Um, so we need something to replace that. So that's, that's kind of my uh, mindset. Um, and the fourth option... Only if it was 100% compatible in every single way and had RF out as well. <laughs> That's like the extreme. Um, I, maybe I went a bit too far on that. But um, some people are like, well, it's got to it's gotta be compatible with everything. Yeah. Because if you're going to replace the hardware, I got to bring out my obscure thing that I can plug into it. And it's got to work with it perfectly. It's got to work with every game got to work with every joystick every peripheral trackball um keyboard controllers everything um i would be leaning more towards four i mean i just disregard the rf thing <laughs> people are like ah forget the rf so i'm gonna put a four as well it needs to be perfect yeah. it needs to be fully compatible otherwise why why do it what's the point if you're not gonna make it 
perfect. Absolutely. Um, so let's uh, dig into the box. Yeah, man. And let's see open if this, it's actually in there. Let's open this shit up. Um, so I ordered this. Oh, here's the... I think I showed this off. This is the bad one. The yeah, bad plug the that was so causing awesome. me trouble. But either way, it didn't work. So let's dig into this box here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's find out. From... Collector Vision to me. And this is a Canadian product. It's made in Quebec. It's always nice to represent <laughs> us Canadians, you know? Yep. Uh, Ubisoft is from Quebec, man. Oh. I believe. They did the Assassin's Creed stuff. They actually run their studio out of Quebec, which oh, wow. is amazing. There's a lot of uh, game studios in Vancouver, but and they're not Canadian. Correct. I mean, no, no Canadian really tends to market themselves as Canadian. <laughs> also, Bioware was originally from Edmonton. Alberta, really? yeah, wow. man, which is pretty wild. That is, that is interesting. So but they're gone. They're all dispersed. This could now. be just a box of packing peanuts, like I said in the pre-show chat. Um, yes, Phoenix has. I will get to that. So, so we have at least a small box. Yep. So here's a very small box. Well, has no label on it. And uh, no, this is what I thought it was. Okay, of course. good, good, good. Of course, good. it is. Um, and when you order it, you get a uh, free game. What game did you get? Sydney. Well, it comes uh, with the exact same game. Um, everyone. Uh, Sydney Hunter and the Caverns of Death. It's a platformer. Damn. Um, did we played a Sydney Hunter game? Was that it? I and don't know. May Mayans. Remember when somebody sent us? Oh fuck, man! If that's the same one, I goddamn love that. That it's, was so it's a cool. Different game. Well, you had like a gun, and you yeah. had like a, you had that climb. It was very Indiana Jones style. Yes, I fucking love that game. That was awesome. Uh, comes with. Uh, but I'm a next gen kid. It's terrible. <laughs> HDMI cable. It's always nice when they include everything you need. Some things don't because they're like everybody has an HDMI cable. It's oh, true. Came off. You want to put that? Yeah, on there? for sure, man. And. The magnificent piece of hardware itself, the Cali the a uh, collector vision Phoenix. Whoa! There we go. And I opted for the black version. There was a gray version that looked more like the computer system, the computer, the Coleco Atom, which was the computer version of the Coleco Vision. Would you ever play this on the show, or is this a more of a personal? Because you got tons of, you got a beautiful collection of um, consoles, man. I do. Um, Someday you maybe, guys. maybe. Once in a while, um, if a good homebrew comes out that I buy, that I'm really interested in. Oh, you're sitting on packing peanuts. Oh, am I shit, yeah, man? Yeah, running right there. That's the nightmare of these packing peanuts, Yeah, and man. the cats love to eat them, too, so I gotta... Yeah, I think they're made of uh, potatoes or corn, so it's yeah, probably okay. but I don't... You know, the choking hazard is the issue. Yeah, that's... Because they kind of turn into glue. That's right, and... Uh, uh, when they get wet. And no one... It's manufactured crap, right? Like, it's not... The first Sydney Hunter was to be Smurf, but a uh, cease and desist happened. Oh, okay. That's hilarious. <laughs> But that does happen. Make sure it's your own IP. Um, okay, so let's get this out of the um, plastic here and take a look at um, it. Yeah, if you pop on our YouTube channel, you can just sort of like look through there. Um. Packled, welcome. Yeah, just go to the um, Zero Page Homebrew YouTube channel and just do a search for Galaga or just search for Galaga 2600 homebrew and I bet homebrew. you it will pop up we'll be in the, the first three at least a cool video to watch would be the reveal of it because that oh, was really yeah. fun we we did like this special show we actually didn't know that that was the game all we knew that a game was being done yeah so that's probably the video to watch if you wanted to check something it was out myself n nobody knew it except for the programmer and like one other two yeah. other people and, and James lost simple. his mind man lost it was great yeah, that's that's definitely like if there was like a top ten like zero page homebrew <laughs> episodes, that's like probably near the top, you know. So here it is. Oh, that's the back of it. Let's. Oh nope, there we go. Collector Vision Phoenix. There you go. There's a front, and it's got the two controller ports, and a keyboard port. Uh, here is the top of it. With the cartridge slot, it says insert insert cartridge here, <laughs> um, and then it's got a power and a reset button, and the power sticks down. 
so it is like an actual switch and on the back it's got uh, HDMI. hdmi out is it like a vga no no it's an expansion um port for future things and it looks like a big vga and it also supports it doesn't. snes controller Damn. as well oh does it have rf as well um, no this is a no, keyboard no 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 that's just a, a keyboard, keyboard. that's yep. great though so it can support snes controllers um and it supports it's supposedly compatible with with everything that the original they they really went all out to make sure um that this was fully fully compatible it comes with no manual oh <laughs> oh no it's in here Damn. okay, okay I, thought that good. Was, I thought that was the manual for the video game um so let's take a look so i, already... I love this boxing too it's literally just like you know a <laughs> bit of plastic with like mask and tape <laughs> Yep, very simple. That's fine with me. No I pay extra yeah, for no box. USB. Uh, no, no In USB. Interesting, hey? Yeah, I mean it. That would be, yeah. Because that's kind of that is a, certainly a universal. Uh... No USB for programming it. It does have a SD card slot in the front. So you can get things into it and upgrade it through that's there. That's not bad. So that's uh, the ability to kind of connect to it. But no USB. You can't plug it into your uh, computer easily mm -hmm. anyway. I'm sure there's going to be hackers out there to play with it. Um, Collector Vision Phoenix, the arcade quality video game system for ages 8 to adult. But not past adult. Yeah, man. None of these 7-year-olds. <laughs> no. Get the fuck out of here. None of that. Um, so it is uh, world compatible for power. You can use it anywhere, and HDMI allows that. Oh, cool, man. I don't know anything about what you said, but that's very cool. Uh, what, the pack led? No, he just said, found your YouTube channel, and uh, if John from Gen X Grown Up hasn't already reached out, we'd be interested in doing something with you guys. Oh, That's excellent. super cool, man. That would yeah, be, I'll have to check that out. That would be I... sick. We'll have to look into all that stuff. Uh, ColecoVision, Atari, a PC keyboard oh it's a pc keyboard uh, attachment ps2 that's very cool um yes atari controllers can uh, fit into this as well but you need a bunch of buttons usually to play coleco games because they had here's here's an original uh coleco vision controller damn so it has uh one through zero and a star and a pound key not a hashtag <laughs> <laughs> what and it's got two buttons um, I believe they're the same, maybe not. And a, and a pretty good controller, a top top uh, arcade style ball controller, and it's the same uh, DB9 um, connector as Atari 2600. Uh, yeah, the option for a PS2 is a nice addition. Yeah, so you can type if there's uh, programs that you need typing on. Which grown up are you? <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm the millennial in the room. This Gen X business, it's so great. So let's get this fired up and check it out fuck yeah dude so i've got a couple games here we're not going to spend too long on it okay cool but... um we'll probably get to sydney hunter maybe another episode oh cool but just to check it out yeah just to check it out um so it's got a plug that we're gonna plug in here i listened to the gxg podcast oh, oh cool so oh, some it's a podcast dude there's okay. some fucking crossover this is beautiful friends growing up gen x am i gen x I think I think you te I think you are. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you are, man, honestly. I think so. I can't really I haven't really memorized that. So, there we go. I think this should reach. There's also like a there's like a, like a Gen X attitude, you know. I don't know if you fit the attitude exactly. But, <laughs> but you know, that's the thing. Sometimes you can be born in like a thing, but your attitude is a certain way, you know. Yeah. 1960s to 80s. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah, I, that's yeah. for sure, that's James. Yeah. I'm 91, so I'm like I'm like one of the first millennials. I'm not like quite like I think there's like the real millennials are people born in 2000, but like 90s kids. I think when I like I was like what I was like nine in, when 2000 hit. Oh yeah. So like okay, so um, I actually have a very special controller. Um, oh holy very shit! Very rare, man. very very rare, very special controller. That was modified from a uh, Famicom, and we showed this off last time. Oh, um, I'm just on the edge, man. 1990. Oh. Uh, um, that is modified from a uh, Famicom, I can't remember what it was, but some dial-in service. 
So it's the controller is very rare, and then this modification for ColecoVision is very rare. So I'm very happy to have this. So let's plug this in because it's a really cool uh, D-pad controller. Um, so let's get it powered up and switch. That's an elegant little machine there, man. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's really nice and small. Which input is it? Well, we'll find out, I guess. Let's go to input two. No. Yeah, man, and also the the there, gen no. stuff. It's like it's a sort of lateral move away from horoscopes. You know, <laughs> it's like you were born like... in September. This oh, makes you, uh, you know. But I think generationally, for sure, there's a there's a level to that. But yeah, it's like you know. So I got powered on. This green light on the front. It means as much as you want it to. And let's get it to the right input, which is HDMI 1. Ah, oh, sick. Oh. Oh. <gasps> there we go. Dude. So now fucking I'll get it. Phoenix. So we'll get it so everyone else can see it. One second. <laughs> Gen X equals no stick up ass. I do. Yeah, man. <laughs> Oh, there we go. What's interesting is like what generation is sort of stepping oh. into power, right? I feel like Gen X's are really the people who are taking up more powerful positions in the world and the baby boomers are sort of disappearing and that's like a cultural shift for sure. So there are a number of games that come with the Phoenix. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah, which games are we? Like they, on the SD card, they actually include that's a bunch badass. of games, which is very, very nice of them. Um, that that collector vision put out themselves. So these are homebrew games. So let's power that off. Let's see if we missed anything. One it powers on. Oh, here's a question: Has the Galaga homebrew been released? Uh, it was released at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Uh, it has not been released in the. Uh, Whoa, story look at this yet? Shit. This is totally different world. <laughs> it is. So I'm just kind of yeah. I'm getting excited. It hasn't been released in the Atari Age store yet, um, but he did say November, but it's just November. Yeah. Uh, oh look, chess. Hey, <laughs> fuck yeah, man. So we've got Armageddon, uh, chess final. It's good. It's the final one. Yeah. Uh, li light grid racing. Mecha, Mecha 8, 8. damn, Vision. Mr. Turtle, lot, lots of finals. Also, I like that there's no kind of like like consistent, you know, we have no. dashes, we have underscores, we have like... <laughs> yeah, if this was me, I would be like, the date. I know, this the, is what The year thinking. it put out, the I, name, who developed this it. This is not a James Earl O'Brien organized hard drive. <laughs> no. Uh, so I have to make sure I, I save all these off of here so that yeah. they don't get uh, corrupted. Um, so, A is better t to schedule than Atari. What? There's a demo ROM. Yeah, there is a demo, so you can download the demo. Um, it was put at a PRGE, uh, 50 of them, and it's sold out. This is, um, uh, the Galaga. Galagon. Galagon! Galagon, that's what we gotta keep calling it. Yeah, but I mean, Galaga, Galagon, you know. We all yeah. know what it is, but yeah, it's like the actual <laughs> branding's Galagon. Would you like to play a game? Yeah, so which one should we play? Let's do Tank Mission, man. I don't sure. know what Tank Mission is all about. Reading Megacart. But I feel like something with tanks. That's pretty quick. One for normal, one for F-18A. So that uh, F-18A is an upgraded um, sound chip. Cool, it's good you know this stuff. So there's sound on there, but I don't hear, I don't see sound coming through. Through your guys' um, your guys stuff. That's the problem with like a new setup, right? It always takes a bit of, um, you know, a little bit of finessing to get all this stuff lined up. Yeah. That's is where you can really hear a difference, you know, in the, in the, in the gen. Cause like oh, yeah, uh, with the sound specifically. This is uh, ColecoVision. When did it come out? Well, this is 80, actual 80 kind of like one? resembles real musical tones. Which is the Atari <laughs> kind of like sometimes it does, but other times don't it just doesn't. the Atari. 
<laughs> oh no, I'm not dissing the Atari. I'm saying it's 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 like a different medium completely. It is. I mean, all the all the eight bit stuff, or all the like, you know, what is it? What's the style of music you play before the show? Oh yeah, that's uh, what's it called? Commodore sixty four music. Yeah, well, like all that stuff is like its own thing, but it's neat to hear like. Okay, well, you can play it while, okay, while I try and figure out the Okay, um, let's find sound. out about... Okay, how, which is the... Okay. I would go for private. Let's, <laughs> let's go do the easy. Private, yeah. Welcome to tank mission. Locate the Enigma? Where's my tank at? Oh, bottom Oh, left. shit. Oh, shit. Okay. Do I have, like, limited fuel? You guys are just going to have to hear the music over the... Upgraded video chip. Oh, okay, that's what it is. Some great music on the C64. Definitely some... It's just a different sounding business. Oh, it's just... just... Whoa! Oh, run! <laughs> You're, like, running over things with your tank. It's making tank... Uh, Whoa! Tra okay, I Ooh, obviously... That just missed you. I want to get like this... like there's some escapes. I, I want to figure out what this thing is. Okay, you picked it up. I don't know what is going on, but all I know is I'm a tank, <laughs> and shit is happening. Oh, okay. now you picked up that. Looks like you picked up everything. So head out, head out of this level. Yeah, I'm gonna get out of this place. Oh no. Uh oh. Uh oh. Trees, trees are too, no. too formidable for you. Whoa. Okay. Holy shit, dude. Okay, there's actual, like, war now. Look at this. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, there's buildings and Whoa. tanks firing on you. I would uh, take some cover. There's, like, a sword? What is going on? I got it, though. Whoa. Okay, we picked the right game. <laughs> um, so, this was this uh, system was originally... Oh, bam. No! Yes, take that. Was originally a Kickstarter. James, there's Nazis. Look. Oh boy. Oh, there is Nazis. Um, was originally a Kickstarter, but they didn't make enough money on their Kickstarter for the Collector Vision Phoenix. I think they got pretty close, but not completely. I'm, I'm going to try they, crossing this bridge. It might be a mistake. No, it's not. Uh oh. And then they opened it up. Um, decided to go ahead with it anyway. And um, are you fighting Nazis? I yes, fucking am, is. man. God damn these Nazis. You should have tried to blow down that wall and... Uh, oh, I was trying, but it didn't seem oh, to be doing anything. Not effective? Uh-oh. it's The movement is not easy. Oh, that's a tank. Slow moving. Oh, you are... I have no bullets. Fire, come on, man. Got 14 S's. That might be shield. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, no, you got 16 S. That makes sense. Uh, I'm not... I'm certainly not um, crushing it. <laughs> no. But You've got F89. Now you've got 19 S. Maybe that's your score. Yeah. Uh-oh. H, health, 29. The tank on the tile looked like it had a German army, army cross on it. Whoa. Yeah. So. Whoa, dude. Oh, it's what totally is, different game. What happened? Wow, it's like. And there's a, there's a dog? Oh, my God. This that is dog the, looked mean. This oh, is, yeah, he's mean. Whoa. Run, run this is dog. the gift that keeps on giving. Can I shoot down? Yeah. Uh, you can duck. Oh. Can you shoot through dirt? No. No. I think you have to just jump over that dog. Whoa, oh, whoa. he's eating uh, your uh. legs. I can't even, like, okay, we got him. But I'm trapped. Look. And then, uh, no. jump out of it. I can't. No. Oh, you're trapped. Bug. <laughs> Can you ro roll out of it? Sonic, get out of there, Sonic. Get out of here, buddy. Oh, my God. Okay. He's trapped. Okay, we can try a different game if you yeah. want. Let's check it out. There you go. I, I can't figure out the audio. Which one right should now. we do next? Yeah, somebody, the first person to. Yeah, tell say. us a name. Um, and then we will try a cartridge. Which one? Uh, tell, uh, us a, tell us a chess name. Final, light first, grid one, first one that pops up. Mecha is the one I'm doing. But Mr. I won't do Turtle. chess because I don't think anyone no. really wants to watch. Okay, so what is that? Sacred, Sacred Tribe. Sacred Tribe it is, friends. Yeah, because chess is just kind of like, I mean, a specific deal that. Oscar Toledo. Whoa. I believe. Sydney Hunter and the Sacred Tribe. Dude, is that the shit that we got here? No. So we have two Sydney oh, Hunter games good now. good news. The Great Adventurer. Fuck, I'm in. We have... There's three of him. 
<laughs> Whoa. Is this the one we played? Whoa. I think it is. No, it isn't. Greetings, stranger. Are you, are you sure? Um, so this has the super game module built into it, and you used to I have just... to buy it separately to give you the advanced um, graphics and advanced sound and the extra ROM. Oh. Do I just jump? I'm just going to jump. I think ready? sand, you'll be able to jump out of it. Oh, get that. Yeah, you've got one. Okay, that's good. It's, it's like just... tutorial level. Oh, spikes. Oh, they're slow. Or not moving. Oh, that's how you go in. Whoa, whoa. Okay, it's sand. You got to run on top. Okay. Ooh, bat. Oh, on a predestined. Uh, Mecha 8 is an SG, no. uh, SGM game. Ah. Yeah, really good animation. Oh, it gives you the mapping for the SNES controller if you want to use that. That's no, cool. I tried to jump at the last second and I failed. Come on, Sydney. Um, Whoa! Oh, that's a harsh jump. Can you make it though? I wasn't watching. I don't. That was pretty borderline. I'm wondering if there's like another way, maybe. Could be. I'm just gonna try again. Oh, Yay! Okay, just not the simplest. Holy shit, friends. It's just sand at the bottom, but you yeah. probably want to make it so you can get that diamond. No! Uh, okay, it was you're just... You're done. Duck. Oh! Oh! I didn't think you'd get through there. Oh, dude, I think I just S found a secret, secret diamond level. Yeah, you wouldn't see that till you come back around and then be like, oh. My but, God. like, I don't know what to do about this bat, man. Uh, I, sink I, into the I sand? Dunk? Yeah, that's... Sink into the sand and just stay down a bit? There you go. There whoa, you go. Whoa, 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 buddy. Oh, okay. not high enough. Oh, you're going to have to go all the way around to get that diamond. I don't think it's possible, actually. Oh, oh. shit. I was. I didn't mean to jump. Okay. okay. Wow, what a good game. That's very cool. I like that game. Okay. So we have a couple games here. We're just going to try one. We don't want to take too long on this because it's not Atari. Yeah, it's just showing off some new stuff. So we've got uh, Burger Time, Mr. Do's Castle, Montezuma's Revenge, BC's Tw Quest for Tires 2, Grog's Revenge, and Gorf. I don't even know none of these. Let's do BC's Quest for Tire. This is testing out the cartridge slot. Burger Time. So I haven't cleaned that cartridge, so that might be an issue too. We'll find out. So it should just go right to the cartridge, I would think. It's doing some video. It's figuring its adjusting. shit out. Oh, nope. It failed. What, do you think I go back, maybe? Uh, yeah, try that. This dot, 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 would that yep. send me back, do you think? Oh, look. What's Atari 2600? Oh, that must be a directory. Go into that? Oh, it's nothing in it. Uh, Coleco. Coleco? That's probably where we were, yeah. What about, like... Don't do the cores. <laughs> what about system information? Shh, no. No. Okay, so let's try a different game, because that one just might be dirty. That's why it was flipping out. I didn't clean these. Let's try Montezuma's Revenge. Oh, he says, can you test a 2600 arm game on it? Oh, huh. Uh, yes, I can. I can pop out the SD card. Yeah, see what that's like. So that didn't work either. Um, I can just... Might, yeah, we might be... I'll try the uh, I'll try the twenty six hundred. I I don't know if you have to load the core first. I think you do. There we go. See, it does Shit. work. Yay! Press star for no. Did we lose it? No, no, no. It's just doing its flipping out because of the video signal. Oh, what happened? I didn't do anything. Why did it say? Oh no, it just it didn't boot core. What were the options there on oh, the screen? It was. It seemed like it was like one for booting to the cart. We'll see, like, I'm not... Press star. See, and then it, it just kind of oh. kicks out. So I think... I, it's not me. I think it's the... I think we're just struggling with the... We're going to go into setup. There we go. Oh, install core. Remove core. System info. It doesn't say which core it's using here. Uh, credits? Yay. Yay! Lots of people worked hard. Yes, they did. Oscar Toledo Guiertes. We've talked with him. He makes... Uh... Darcy's name is on the screen. Hey, you're not Darcy. 
Did somebody point that out? Yeah. Oh, okay. Fuck yeah, man. I got my name back. <laughs> it's dark times. The funnest is when I turn into Tanya. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the bizarre core. Oh, okay. So we can pick a 2600 core, which is obviously not going to work with burger time that I plugged in. Oh, wow. Load the ROM. How do you enter? A B. Try B. That's what I've been doing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay, so and now... So you can load shit onto there? Yeah. So let's pop in a game. Let's, uh... What game should we do? We should do Galaga. Yeah, dude. Because <laughs> that's going to be the biggest test, I would think. That's what you guys are here for anyway, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, man, we've had reference to it. We know what's up. There That's go. right, it's a true unboxing. That's right. <laughs> Getting to the good stuff. Does it play Galagon? <laughs> That's number one, man. Copy the folder as well. I would think it should work because it's a core. It's like the 2600 system, but I don't know. I don't know. What, what, do, what do people think? Is it going to work or not? Make your bets. Place your bets. I don't know what the odds are, but... Uh, I think it's good chance. May the odds forever be in your favor. Man, I watched Blade Runner last night at Cineplex. Oh, uh, did you? Because it's November 2019. Isn't that wild? <laughs> we didn't realize that until it came on screen and we're like... You didn't? No. I thought that's why you would watch it. We just wanted to see Blade Runner and it was playing and we were like, boys, boys, it's 29... <laughs> that's incredible. And um. Oh, oh I guess you... Does it boot automatically? Well, let's see if we can just play the Atari 2600 from here. No. Because oh, we got to boot it to the other side, you think? Yeah. But no, I noticed the Atari in fucking Blade Runner, man. What the hell? Oh, oh did you? Yeah. Yeah, because they, they plastered Atari symbols all over the place and like neon signs. And I was like, guys, it's the channel. Oh, when you do reset, it's not a full reset. It just resets to the Coleco. So we're going to go for Atari 2600. It looks like it have a, has a ton of cores you can play, which means you can install like other consoles on this. Let's see. Which is great. Oh, it wouldn't be dope if this works. Yeah. I'm, 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 I think it's about a 50-50 chance. I'm not going to lie. That's what I, I, it's like a 50-50 chance. This of... one's a really new version. So what do you think? Did it work? <laughs> what do you guys think of Galagon? <laughs> um. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, man. Galagon is really... I don't know. It hasn't aged like wine. It's well, really... <laughs> oh. Wow, you can do it on the fly. Start? We can make an experimental, um, uh, you know, media piece using... No, it would need to emulate the ARM processor. Uh, okay. Yeah, because it only has the core of what's in the 2600 originally, and uh... has nothing, has no information about the ARM. So... <laughs> That's right, yeah. How did it sell out, man? It's so confusing. This How? is what they NTSC? wanted. Scan lines? <laughs> Color? Black and white? Yeah. But let's uh, let's just put a non-arm game on there. What's a good one to put on there? Um, that would be fun to check out. Dude, I'm really stoked for that um uh that like big RPG one. What's that one called? 
Oh, it's a uh, uh, penalt. Dude, I'm really stoked for penalt. Yeah, I can't wait. I know what I'll put on. I'll put on Amoeba Jump. Yay! <laughs> it's not. If anybody can suggest a game, oh, so it wouldn't play Pitfall Two? No, it wouldn't. Oh, let's try Pitfall Two. Then. Another good suggestion. If it doesn't play Pitfall Two, then. There's, it's not gonna play any DPC games or DPC well, it's plus cool games. To check this shit out, man. It is, yeah. So yeah. even with the uh, cartridge add-on, it won't. Mm -hmm. No, it would because it would be doing the arm from the cartridge. Um, so any ROM won't work unless. It's, um, I'll get to that in a second. Man, how do you feel about blowing into cartridges? I've heard like such mixed things. <laughs> there People is no say, mixed. It is bad. Yeah, because apparently it's just it's literally a placebo effect, uh, yep. and it just adds a bunch of moisture that doesn't yes. help the. Thing. Were you about? No, to I'm not going out? to. I'm just. You picked up the most expensive. I was of just. All of I them? was just. I was just adding some tension to the show by holding it because I knew what you would think. The rarest of all these <laughs> cartridges, Mr. Dew's Castle. <laughs> just blow it into your games. Oh my God, no. No, I, well, I would never, I would never do such a thing. But I was always, <laughs> I, I was very curious what you thought about that. Uh, no, it's it's useless and it wrecks it actually. It does way more harm than good, and it's not, and it is placebo. What if like, you? What, it's it's the act of putting it in and, and taking it out that somewhat cleans it a bit. Wouldn't it? So if you let's say you took like, how do you properly clean a cartridge then? Like compressed air, uh, if you blew it out a bit if and then did that. If it's dirty. Um, but if it's just, um, if it's got s slime on it or scut, like, like dirt and wear, you know, use isopropyl alcohol. Oh, with and like a, a Q tip. tip. Oh. And you scrub it. And if it's really, really bad, you open up the cartridge and, um, and you can use a, an eraser. I've seen a lot of people doing that, like using an eraser to rub it off, which ah. is just rubbing it off. So here's pitfall two. Let's see what, how it's this not goes. going to work. I, I would say, based on the Galaga. I'm ready for some experimental video art. Fuck yeah! We could get into a gallery with this. That one doesn't do anything. Colors! Woo! Scan lines. No. Whoa. Okay. So, Amoeba that was an obvious jump. one. I should have loaded Amoeba Jump. Oh, power. Oh my That's god. That's okay. It was, uh, it's good that we tested so everyone knows what's up. Where the state of it is. But those options might be good because maybe they can program in the uh, ARM code or DPC plus support eventually. Yeah, man. This is a nice little product. It Oh, it's very, very nice. Very nicely made. Uh, okay, so let's get in Amoeba Jump so we can actually play at least one 2600 game. Uh, amoeba, amoeba. There we go. Copy. Paste. And eject. So a lot of homebrew won't work on this. Only, uh... Am I the only one getting the crazy sound effects? No, man. It's cr it's crazy. Oh! Oh, there was something there. It is sending some audio over. Crappy audio. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. It looks like you guys are getting some stuff that even we're not hearing. So interesting. Yeah. Pink noise. Yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. Slot 2. 2600. Not so sure what output it. Like, what is this? It's I guess we'll strange. know as soon as we... Um, as soon as we load up a game. Whether this is like a, a square screen or what this is. So let's do the NTSC version. Oh, no. This looks good. Pal NTSC started the game. Color black and white. Scan lines, no thanks. Whoa, those are not good scan lines. Whoa. Uh, those are fine. 
Super chip and cartridge? No. Let's uh... see the thing. I don't know much about the super chip. So if they can say super chip and cartridge, could they say an ARM processor and cartridge as well? And and okay, so let's start. There we go. Um, so do we do exit? I bet it's exit. There yeah. we go. It looks cool. It looks different. Do you, am, am I wrong? It look. It looks like. You know. Uh, no, the colors probably are well, different it looks, color. It looks actually m almost more pixelated to my eye. Just the character. I could be wrong though. Uh, maybe because of his shading. You've never noticed it before. Like he's yeah. got d d different shading there. And we're still not getting audio out of the system. Yeah, not that's not awesome. It's not passing along the uh, HDMI audio for some reason, but. Um, we're just playing around with it. Yeah, it takes some troubleshooting. No, super chip means extra RAM. Okay, ah. so not a processor. But I'm sure as their um, as the the system gets more developed, they'll be able to answer more questions about um, DPC support and um, ARM support as well. Lost it there. I don't like this with a touch, with a pad. I like it with the joystick better. Yeah, man. So there you go. It works. Bad cable. Maybe that's why we're getting static. It's very possible. I mean, it's just a random. Yeah, it it could be a bad cable, not passing along good good information. But I just set this up really quickly. Um. So there you go. If there's anything else you want us to check with this. Oh. Look on the bottom there. Yeah. Yeah, there's something. Well, this, as I said, it to not my... Not a perfect core yet. Because to my eye, this looks like a, a little, little bit different. more pixelated. It's, do you know what I mean? Like the lines are sharper, especially on the bottom. Oh, well, this is digital. Yeah. This is a digital output. Let me load it on um, Stella. Yeah, let's see what that looks like. Because I think that it's... Um, I'd just be curious what to compare the two. Because maybe I'm just crazy. Because I, I don't have a perfect memory for this shit. So let's Amoeba jump the annoyed. <laughs> yeah, look at the There we go. And switch over. So this, this is, is a James Earl O'Brien organized drive. Yeah, look, look at, at this. the difference. <laughs> These are the so if you take a look at this, we go to Amoeba Jump and it says who's it who it's by, because they're actually games that are named the same. Definitely. With different art, with different people. Then there's every build of Amoeba Jump that's ever come out. And when it began as Poodle Jump. Yeah, and Doodle, Doodle Jump. Doodle Jump, you know. I like Poodle Jump. Um, so this is the exact same game. Oh, this is pretty nice. Sorry about your ears. Sorry, 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 sorry. It feels cleaner for sure. So I can switch back and forth. So this is Stella. And this is the Phoenix. Is it? Because the Phoenix had the weird um, issue well, you with. You can them. only see it here. Oh, I see. Because I'd have to switch the. Team oh back yeah. And forth. This is much quicker. So this is the Phoenix, and this is Stella. So I, it's it's exactly the same, except for the glitchiness of the. Yeah. Moment. So there you go. It's good now though. It does do some uh, noise seems to be coming through when James is using the computer. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Well, this is about the same. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. See the press fire. Yeah. So yeah, th there needs to be some some updates. So if anybody wants to lend their twenty six hundred uh, knowledge to the people over at Collector Vision, um, right. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to fix up issues. If uh, you guys want to throw your weight behind it and, and help them out. But, um, yeah, I think we're going to move on. Yeah, man, that sounds good. And we'll maybe come back to this at another time and play some... Because uh, now I have a really... Well, I had an easy way of doing a homebrew before as well with the, my um, RGB modded yeah. Vision. But this is, this is great. And this will be great for 
game night on Saturday. I have Fuck a retro yeah, game man. night once a year. And this year, for some reason, I messed up. And it's the 27th anniversary of ColecoVision and Vectrex. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you got to You got to do that. It's like me going to Blade Runner in November, you know. <laughs> like sometimes things just work out. Yeah. So we're going to be playing uh, for high scores on some uh, ColecoVision games and Vectrex yeah. games. Dude, Blade Runner is out of control on the big screen. Holy fuck. Oh, you saw it on the big screen? Yeah, I saw it. Theater. Yeah, we went to the Cineplex. It was playing oh. at International Village, and it was like the Final Cut, like an HD remastering of it. Oh, yeah. With like 5.1 surround sound. It's very special to get to see that movie in the big screen. Because it's, God, is that a cinematic movie? Oh, yeah. It's and it still the... holds up the visual effects because um, they're all practical, right? I'd say so. that the big exterior miniature vistas where the sort of ships kind of fly through are pretty terrible. Oh, but really? everything that's in a real location is insane oh okay. like because they cut to them and, and they're just not as like any there's like that the miniature of the sort of pyramid you can definitely feel that that's dated oh, but anytime okay. you cut to like a real set that's like with human beings in it it's fucking so goddamn good <laughs> right oh and i just and there was an update on october 31st uh posted in the ColecoVision lunatics uh facebook group yeah group um, from uh, Jean-Francois Dupree, uh, he posted a picture of a prototype of the 2600 adapter for this. So you'll be able to plug in cartridges directly in, 2600 cartridges. And he said, we started working on the Atari 2600 cartridge adapter for the Phoenix. It's still early and we do have a lot of work left to do, so it's not going to be ready for this year. Well, it's 2019, so that means it's, they're thinking it's going to be ready fairly soon. Yeah. Uh, we need to take care of the Phoenix first and foremost, but I wanted to inform you that the Atari 2600 cartridge adapter is in the works. I'll keep you updated as soon as we have more details to share. The best is yet to come. Um, so hopefully it's just a straight pin out, pin in. You can read all the pins, um, no matter what type of cartridge it is. Hopefully even the Harmony cart, the Uno cart, any of these new up and coming things that the core can be updated to be able to adapt to those and this can be a very a good alternative um, for people looking to play 2600 games um, through HDMI and it looked it looked great like beautiful on the, on the big screen yeah so that's wonderful so uh, I'm very happy to finally get that I ordered it a year ago um, it is not cheap I'll let you know it is not a cheap system I think it's two hundred and fifty dollars US so uh, for us in Canadian dollars, it's like 325 or something. Yeah, it's a lot. Wow. It's a lot of money. But it because I bought it because it has the future capability of running so many systems. You saw on the screen there was like 8 or 10 slots yeah. for different consoles. So you could have, I don't, I don't know what power it could go up to. It could maybe do SNES yeah. games. I'm not what, sure what the FPGA is rated for. But at least all the old school games that don't have um, you know, accessibility to them. So the first game we're going to be playing... Oh, actually, let's take a look at the poll. Um, it is split fairly closely between 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. Definitely we need to prepare it for the future and only if it's 100% compatible in every single way. So people are like, yeah. I'd be down for an FPGA Atari 2600 wow, yeah. um, version of this. Um, and they didn't seem to be too concerned about the reasonably priced uh, option. Uh, only 10% voted for that. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, we'll buy it anyway. It's all good. Yeah, and honestly... For that 300 is... would you buy it? Well, 250 would you buy that for 250 though? Uh, Atari 2600, if it was perfect, like emulated everything... You plugged in every cartridge. That's the that'd be pretty good, actually. Yeah, man. That's and uh, I mean, if it just if it actually works and is like seamless and yeah. can plug into like your new TV, the benefit of something like that is that if you wanted to take that to like I don't know, you're going on a trip, you're gonna yes. hang out with some people, yes. and you can kind of because bring like, your multi cart, fucking bring, throw it in. Bring that was small, small console, and you're good. You're ready for the weekend. And you can plug into a TV at a cabin or something. Yeah. You know that would be the at real a hotel benefit. even. Hell yeah, yeah, with HDMI in. Because we have the Retron 77, yeah. but it doesn't 
support the multi card. It yeah, doesn't support advanced it's Thanksgiving cards. Thanksgiving or Christmas, you want to hang out with your nephew. You bring it over Avoid to the, the house. Avoid the family. <laughs> yeah, you want to you want to connect with your kid, right? You know, you don't know how to. You know, it's it, that would be very cool. You want to share some of your childhood with them. That would be a real benefit because it feels like you, to do some of this stuff, you really gotta like, you know, jump through some hoops. So yeah, you do. To eliminate those hoops would be killer. So we're gonna be playing Power Off first. It's from two thousand two. It's by Eric Basher and Igor Barzilia. Cool. Um, so here you go. I'll let you. Take a stab at it first. Sick. Let's see. Power off. So just hold for a second. Don't be pressing that button. It's a pretty cool. Um, oh my god, why is this so huge and centered? Uh, that's better. There we go. So, Ebby Vision. That's the company. It was cords on top of cords. Get out of here. So, what does it say? Thanks to Randy something from Hoser Vision. Power off. Mission. Deactivate all the energy cells from, from the Xenorg system. Beware. Whoa. That's that's to read that <laughs> shit. Robots is. are haunting the rooms. Advice? Question mark. Take your time and stand by carefully how the robots study carefully. Thanks to Randy. Okay, we're back. So this is the seventh game put out by him. Damn. So let's jump into it. Should I hit the Go F? for it. Oh. oh, I think I'm not focused on that. Go for it. Start. Hmm. Holy shit. You hey, move? buddy. Oh, yeah, yeah you I can, can move. Good. So, like, what am I? Uh, I just got dizzy trying to read that. Yeah, that's. Same, dude. Full screen scrolls are brutal. So you have to collect those little dots. You just got some points. You've got three lives. Do so I gotta like one. definitely get them? Yes. Shit. Yeah. I think you have to get all of them to advance the level. Okay. And there's no time limit? Nope. It's, it did say take your time in the beginning, so no time limit. Oh, you almost got it. <laughs> Cautious. Yay. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, right, no. There I am. You forgot the pattern. Um, so this was from uh, originally. No, I just got greedy. It's so originally from way. 2000, but the cartridge in this form, in this name, is from 2002. Um, it's made by Eric Basher, who did Alfred, Alfred Challenge, Pac-Man by Ebby Vision, Power Off, and Igor Barzilla, who did Alia Quest, Merlin's Walls, and Pac-Man by Ebby Vision and Power Off. This is available still in the Atari Age store, even though it was from way back in 2002. I think it was put on cartridge 2004 by Atari Age. Um, and something of note, uh, the game Alfred Challenge by Eric Basher was the seventh homebrew game ever made. So this is old school stuff. The seventh? Not this game, but one of his Whoa. games was the seventh one ever made. Um, and from Arena, F 20, Arena Foot's 2600 homebrew list, the game originally also had a secret message at the end. The first three people who found it were rewarded a prize of free video games and a top prize of a oh. $50 award. Well, it's hard because, like, I got there, but, like, I can't, like, I pushed up, didn't go. I think you got to think about this this one a little bit differently. Well, I got a plan. There's only one way to do it. <laughs> no, there isn't. Oh, you're thinking that. Well, that's the hard part is that it didn't go up I when I wanted it to. the hard way. Um... There is another way. Um, this was sold on Abbey Vision uh, through Abbey Vision, Good Deal Games, and Atari Age. Description from the Atari Age store: Robots took control of the system. Deactivate all the energy pills to switch off the computer. Oh, going up these ladders is like hit and miss, man. Fuck. Is it? You have to yeah. be really precise. Well, like I was like in the center of it, and then the problem is, is that you have such a limited time to grab it uh, that it's not like you know. Try the angles. Try like the up and left. Whoa, you almost got it. Whoa! <laughs> there you go. There you go. Like, see, like, it's like, it's rough. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those well, robots I, well, are brutal. I have to time it right. There you go. This reminds me of kind of wrap Im around, Impossible no? Mission. 
um, with the robots, because the robots in that had a pattern, and you had to do the same thing, except you could jump over those robots. I probably could do this, but I have to be, like, in time with this fucker. I would use the ladder on the bottom to get up in behind him. If you can. Like, just go down the ladder just enough. I, yeah. And then come back up, but you have to time it with that robot down there, too. Oh, we couldn't have done it. I don't know. That's hard. You just have to do it, man. It's, you see, like, you just have to... Ah, uh, that's probably the way. Yeah, there you go. I think you had it right, because I was looking at the pattern of the bottom robot and the, the second robot, and it's just not enough time. He won't hurt you on the ladder. I'm just looking at, like, what these guys are doing. Yeah. So, like, so I don't get... I don't think that, like, I think I got kind of... You got to go down that ladder yeah, to get that I think, one. I think going up one is the way to go. Yeah. This is not easy. And see, like, look, I'm standing right here. Oh, wow. Right? That's the... That's, and that's then, brutal. Well, the problem is, is, like, I can't... And you have to do this really fast. Right. Right? Because it's like you don't have time. Like, there we go. I got it, but it's Can just you do the random. angle? Like, left and down? We'll go down the ladder? I'll try that out in a sec. Do it on a safe one. Do that. Do it on this one. On the left. So holding right and up won't take you up the ladder? Only up will? Yeah. Right will just make me run. So, like, like here I am... There we go, I got it. But it's like so hit and miss. Oh, so like no. half of the challenge of this shit is trying to like... <laughs> what a what a fucking game. <laughs> God damn it, okay. Like look, didn't, didn't do it. Wow, that's way too precise. It should be like, if you're even close to the ladder. You should be able to go up it if you push yeah. up. Like I'm just like, so this kid couldn't go up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, nightmare. Okay. You play the role come of on, Brian. Come on, Oh, fuck me. I can't even go up a ladder. You play the role of Brian 2002 Mer was a hard time. Yeah. A lot of the old games do that, where you have to be so precise. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so That's now... That's good. Now, now you I, get on the right now hand side. Now I can kind of, like, right? begin to... But I couldn't go down. <laughs> oh, fuck. This is tough. <laughs> Diagonals are working. Use them. That's well, I'm on I'm a D-pad is part of the challenge. So, I mean, I can kind of, like... Oh. <sighs> Oh, it starts over? Oh, the pain. Okay, fuck. The pain. I'll try these diagonals. This would be a lot easier on a joystick, though, because on a D-pad, it's not so easy do to wanna, do. Do you want to switch nah, to the joystick? Um, oh, God, this little fucking guy. <laughs> okay, find the edge. You play the role of Brian Merrick, who must deactivate a computer as run amok. This new supercomputer designed by your father. And thanks, Dad. Was, Fuck, was created to help mankind with its instantaneous computing abilities, but something went catastrophically wrong. Well, that's quite a word. When your father switched the machine on, and now oh, you must run through the level after that level was safe. of giant laboratory and deactivate all the energy pills before it's too late. Fuck. Okay, you try this shit out. See how you do. Okay, where, where, where do I gotta read? Where am I right at? Right around there. Before it's too late. Diagonals work just fine. While doing Resetting. this, you must avoid the robots who have been programmed by the computer to protect it at all costs. Power Off is Oops. the fifth game to be created well. by Ebivision, comprised by the French team of Eric Batcher and Igor um, Berzili. Ber Sorry, dude. <laughs> it's a fucking beautiful name. I, I'm, I'm terrible. Um, Power <laughs> Off saw a limited release at the end oh of tw uh, 2002. <gasps> Um, uh, yeah, that's a rough one. But now can be purchased with a professionally printed box manual and label from the Atari Age store. And they got some descriptions here. The game was originally called Escape from Supercade and was to be released in conjunction with a video uh, game book called Supercade. The that's game true. was, um, uh, uh, the game was shown at the CGE 2K and copies were promised by the book's editor, um, uh, Van Burham, to both uh, the winner of a high score contest as well as 100 raffle uh, ticket winners. Soon after the book's release, the author refused um, uh, to uh, reply to emails or fulfill prior promises. <laughs> Evovision eventually decided to release their game under oh. a different name. So dark. <laughs> so dark. That's how it goes. <laughs> you know what I found? So find the edge of this guy and then you can stand right on the edge 
ledge and wait, if that makes sense. That was the only trick I found. So you see, because there's a way he stops, oh, then you wait for him. Because right now you're really far away, like you can yeah. go a bit closer. There you go. And so that when he comes, now you can have the maximum time. Because you can't run faster than him. Right. So now if you run with him, you'll get a bunch of time. If you, if that's what, yeah. But. Angles work just fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just but... gotta learn how to use, how to do them. Like, it's not easy. But, but I mean, the but the other issue is, is like, I'm sure angles work fine, but like, do you really want to be like, pushing potentially left while you need like up should just send you Jesus. up a ladder right it should yes. like that's yes. very strange I know it's, it's to wrong. me it is terrible but it's also terrible having to reset from the beginning you might as well have zero lives like one life right well yeah because it like... resets the whole like you could get up to the last last thing and then actually get the last thing or maybe not depending how the game goes and then you run into a robot and you have to do it all over again jesus that was just dumb yeah. Rip. Kids, this is not an easy game. No. You gotta try this shit at home. <laughs> Where's this robot go to? There. Now I got a time going down the ladder again. I just I just run with him and climb up that ladder. That was how I did oh, it, right? Oh my god. Really? Yeah, man. Because then you can come, because the issue oh, is, yeah, you did. and because the problem is if you don't do anything other than that, you're going to have to oh. climb up that ladder anyways. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Um, and then, and because then you climb up, and then you can come down and grab that one really easily. Yeah. And you do have quite a bit of time to grab it. It's just... <gasps> you run faster than the robots! Yeah, you got to take, you, you got to find oh, a little bit of... Uh, God. I was too good, yeah. too precise. Yeah, you're doing too well. <laughs> Punishes <laughs> yeah, you. That's right. And it's, I could be wrong, but my eye, ugh, it's hard. I feel like, um, I feel like as you go up, there's slightly different speeds. Mm. I could be totally like out to lunch, but looking at some of the ones up at the very top, they seem to be going at a slightly different I think they do. They kind of like jiggering a little bit, like the very. Yeah. So he goes there. Yeah. Okay. And then up, over, and down is the only way. I think you're safe there. And then you have to follow this guy. But you got to time it right. Go up. Yeah. I'm slightly faster than that dude. Ah. Yay. Didn't mean to go that way, but eh. Whatever. Too far up! <laughs> and then you back to the fucking beginning. Oh, harsh game. Yeah, it's unforgiving. I'm slightly annoyed that you're a different speed than the robots. Yeah, and that you can't really easily go up these ladders. <laughs> and that, like, you restart the same spot every time. Yeah, that's... It should... I would like it if you start on the last pellet that you got. That would, that would make it a little bit better, but... Or would... at the very least, you just keep the ones that you've got and you start at the bottom, because like some of these ones, like you have sure. to, like this yeah, one, for true. example, then you could just go up the ladder, right? Yeah. Like you wouldn't have to collect all these fucking things, but I get it. This is partly why I love these these games, because they're like, they're so ruthless. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Yeah, they just, they, they don't, they, you don't, there's no free lunch with Atari, man. No, there Atari isn't. doesn't give you free lunch. Chews you up, spits you out. It tests weakness. Very much like Montezuma's Revenge with the timing. Yeah, oh my god, Montezuma's Revenge is so brutal with the timing. I mean, and then you can just go down. I can't get past that guy. Well, no, if you go through the top one and go down. Oh. The very top and then go down. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, that's yeah. what I would do. Because, see, there's a lot of... And then, because basically what you need to do is just go down from there. That's probably the way to do it, is just go straight up, get all the things on the left, yeah. then down all the things on the right. That's true. Um, it, I bet you we can do it, actually, if we do that method. We're going to at least get level one. I mean, after, if we lick level one... That changes um, the thing, right? Because you need to beat level one with one health, you know. Yeah. Where does this guy go to? Hole is closed. But dude, there's that one scene in Blade Runner that's so uncomfortable. <laughs> the rape scene? Yeah, it's just it's and the fact that it's played off as like love is what's oh, so disturbing. It's terrible. And you could cut the scene, man. Like so easily. There's a beautiful scene with them or on the cut piano it or, cut it, yeah. where they're like, You play beautifully. Cut. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's implied. It's fine. How many fucking cuts did that movie go through and he uh -huh. never cut that scene? I I'll never understand that. It's yeah. like director's cut, final cut, the real final cut. <laughs> and at no point was he's like, Maybe we should just you know, bail on the sexual assault. <laughs> yeah. And he's a Blade Runner. Like, if you were in her position, you would be terrified for your life. Oh you, my you'd be God. like, this guy, his, his yeah. job is to kill me. He just got a contract to murder me. I have to do what he says. He's well, like, that's the reason it happens because he's got this huge power over her. He's like, he's like, kiss me. She's like, say you want to kiss me. Like, it's a very uncomfortable oh, scene. It's a terrible, terrible scene. And then also, I think they could cut a couple of the zoom ins on that photo, too. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that scene, man. Yeah. Enhance. It's like... It, Rotate. It's like seven enhances. Turn. It's like, how many enhances do we need before we get the idea? I mean, it was so... So silly that there's so many parodies made of it. It's the most... Oh, oh my God. I was God. trying to time it. And... Fuck me, man. <laughs> God damn it. This yeah. is a brutal, brutal game. I mean, it gives you a bit of leeway, but not much on each of these robots. And it's much better with that choice. Yeah. Yeah, it's like borderline not really doable on the... On the... Yeah, it's just too finicky. The, the D-pad, that D-pad is terrible. Terrible. Yeah, so much better on this shit, man. Thank you for switching. Some games are not good on that, because it's too precise. No. <gasps> oh. oh, I've done that too. I wasn't even looking. It's like, oh, it's time to get it. Get up there. Fuck. Oh. You want to go one more? I'll try another I one. I want to do one more after you, and then we'll move on. Yeah, because... Because it is not easy. <laughs> and same with that. You, you like have to be in the middle of it. For it to count, like getting that that little uh, pill. Man, also like Empire, he's pretty rapey as well. Harrison Ford. Oh, yeah, less so, but still not. It's good. not like straight up sexual assault like that scene, but it's still like he's just unwanted bully attention. bullying Princess Leia to the point that she's just like, stop, stop, literally, stop. literally. don't touch me. He's like, ugh, bro. <laughs> it's like Jesus Christ. Eighties is a crazy time. Oh, it's bad, dude. Yeah. And then you think about all this John Hughes movies. Some of them has not aged well. Like I, oh. I, I actually watch a YouTube series that analyzes all that kind of stuff in in eighties movies. Oh, it's dark. and movies in general. But he did a whole series on John Hughes movies. Mm. Sixteen like, Candles is the roughest for sure. Oh, it's brutal, brutal. When when you when he takes it out of context. Even in context, it's just terrible. What a weird science is pretty pretty crazy too, man. All those movies. Yeah. There you go. Oh, you could have gone to the right hand side of it. Yeah. Too rough. There you go. You got it. Oh, oh fuck. run! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't. I want to be on the other side though. It's not easy. There you go. I have my use your angles. Oh, it's hard because it's like again, you you have to make that decision very fast you do and if you fuck it up no 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 nope 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 
Nope. <laughs> so many nopes, friends. <laughs> Fuck, okay. There you go. Oh, go. Run, run, run. Okay. I'm literally running for my life. Okay. Careful. Take your time. Does he go past it? Okay, thank God. Oh, fuck, man. It's <laughs> your favorite theme song. It's my favorite song. John Carpenter works with everything. It does, man. Everything could use the assault on precinct. Having the ability to stun the enemies would have been a nice addition. Yes. Having any defense <laughs> would be nice. Does he go all the way to the no, corner? No, Am I no, fucked? No, Am I doesn't. fucked? Am I fucked? Oh, thank God. Okay, okay, okay. I would, yeah. Time I'm just going to take some time. Whoa. So what are these again? They're pills. Energy pills. Oh, you got it, man. Careful. Maybe. Careful. Maybe. Good. No, you got it. They, they're they all... Maybe this one's tough. Well, that's the thing is I gotta, I gotta no, figure out... gives you enough. I gotta figure out this timing. timing I just yeah. gotta get it right. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure that I've got, like, you know... The maximum on... The, not through. that one, yeah. Um, this might be a good one to... That do. one would have been a really good one. Oh, see? Fucking push down, didn't go down. Rip. Okay. <laughs> like, like I said, it might as well be no lives left. Yeah. Like, there's no point. I, I gotta tell you, completely. it's pretty frustrating on a game like this when you can't, when you actually try to like go down and you can't go down, especially when you have to nail these fucking timings. Yeah. I guess I have to like just learn well, how to do the. To... I gotta learn yeah, how to okay. do the old diagonal, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right though. Splendid Nuts like very realistic if you're a man trapped in a series of empty hallways with manufacturing <laughs> robots. <laughs> yep, very realistic uh, representation of that. But dude, I I was telling you this. I didn't say it on the show yet though, but I rewatched RoboCop, and God, is that a good fucking movie, man? And that's another one that's like kind of so ahead of its time. Like they have just co-ed like police. Yeah. And there's and it's not like treated sexually. It's just like oh, he there's... did that in Starship Troopers as well yeah. in that movie, and it's like just feels fine, like normal. It's like okay, in the future we're over this thing. Like if you're working with a woman, she's just your boss. Yeah. She's just your colleague. Yeah. Like it's like you can shower together. It's not like and it's like that's very cool compared to like you know Deckard beating the shit out of Rachel. You know. <laughs> It's like, um, but, ah, oh, it's such a badass movie. Yeah, the second and third one, because there's a, you know, but but the screenwriters who wrote the, the movie, um, I mean, they didn't have any involvement, really, with the second and third one, mm. which is crazy which to me. happens a lot with sequels. Yeah. Like, the, the director's not there, the writers aren't there, it's time to cash in. Totally, right? and it's like, but at the end of the day, like, you know, God, that suit is so fucking good, and the way they shoot the reveal and everything... It's a very well-made movie. And it's a tight hour 47. Like, mm. what movies are an hour 47 anymore? That's something I really no. miss, is those, like, really nice 90-minute movies that just yeah. don't... That, 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 they, just, they just end. You know, the end of Robocop is, like... Is this guy go? So badass. That it's, like, literally just cuts. <laughs> it's just over. It's, like, <laughs> it's just, like, you're fired. Boom. Done. Oh, look Credits. <laughs> look at this last one. Yeah, this is... Oh, God damn it, we did it. So brutal. Oh, my God. Instead of robots, it's just something else, which is cool to change yeah, up the, the look of it. Yeah, so that's you got to go up, get that one, come down, go get, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then come down the other side. Totally. Or I can go you, one up more. I'll go one up more. Now, you got to go, you got to go. I'm going to get that one first because sure. it's so easy. Yeah. The, the other thing doesn't have to come close to it. It's like tons of time. Yeah, you gotta get them all at some point, though. That's the sucky part. Do I want that one? No. So I have to come down the other side of this guy. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Uh huh. Oh, now I have to go back up. Ugh, okay. Yeah. But it's super doable. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing to have that bad collision detection in this game yeah i gotta follow this guy yeah get up there yeah and then come back and down the and then get that one okay and i think it's the same deal actually i think the trick to this one is you go up to the left and then down because if you look at that one on the right it's like there's no fucking way you're getting that <laughs> and there's no point you can get that one on the way down yeah yeah so like yeah, that's no way you know it may uh, you 
Uh, you might be able to. I would, but but you, it's, there's you're no gonna, way you can get it on the. Oh, it's, it's easier on the be, right hand it's side. It's gonna be yeah. really hard to then get the ones on the left, right? So it's like you're you're just you're just risking. Yeah. Now this shit is tricky because you kind of have to get the pellet come back down, or mm -mm. no, you gotta just no, do no, it all no, in no, one. No. There's no um, fucking way. You yeah. gotta like get that left and then just run. Yeah. To grab it and fuck yeah, we got. <laughs> get this. out of there. So I'm gonna go down first. Yeah, you could get and this. And finish up at the top. That's not a terrible idea at all. That guy goes all the way. Fuck. Yeah, because then Damn you got you got to go all the way to the right. I don't know if there's room. Oh, there's right just on the barely edge, I think, room. I think. Just barely room. Oh. No. Rip. Yeah, new game. <laughs> Anyway, we finished we made level, it one, level which, one, which is friends. good. Um, great. I, I think it's a good game. Mm -hmm. It would be an amazing game if they just fixed a couple things. Mm -hmm. The ladder, so you don't have to push up and to the right, up to the left, whatever. Um, and the maybe a bit of collision detection with the pills, so that yeah. when you just touch them, it's fine. You don't have to be in the middle of them. But that that's forgivable. That's not a big deal. Um, and the resetting to zero. Sucks. Just, just keep keep what's on there so you don't have to get them but it's still hard enough to go up those ladders and avoid them oh, hell yeah. without getting the pills so those two changes would be perfect that would make this game um really really good <laughs> ladders are fine gamepad is not yeah yeah the ladders are fine we, i got the hang of it we we figured those out gamepad does not work for that system okay so now we're going to go on to game number two Bass fishing. No, that's nope, what we're ending that's the last on. One. Cool. Yeah. Um, which is uh, shielding color. Yeah. Sick. Also, opening scene of Blade Runner is so fucking badass. How does it open? What opens with the guy doing the test and oh. he talks about the turtle. Yeah. Oh God, is that a good scene? So good. So tense. And he's smoking. And you're like. What is going to happen here? <laughs> what is, like, you don't even know what's going on. And that's a, such a great actor, the performance of that oh, guy, that sort God. of like that brutish, childish, yet bully kind of like strength. And you know something's off. Like, if you, you're just coming into this film, you don't know what about, anything's about anything. You know that something's wrong with this that guy. This blue fucking light with this haze and all this stuff, <laughs> and he's like smoking. He's <laughs> like, he airs up in the air. Oh, so such good. an amazing movie. That, and, the, and the ending of that movie is badass too, man. That last sequence with with um, Roy the replicant and that monologue oh, on this God. fucking rooftop and yeah, like tears and rain. rain. Oh, <laughs> it's just hits one of the you. best lines of of cinema. Oh fuck yeah, man! And like also like him meeting his maker and like you know yeah. doing what he does. Oh, it's such a good, really special to see that in the big screen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is shielding color. Cool. Um, Let's try it out. And literally, there are no instructions for this game. Like, literally. Let's do it. So, yeah. good luck. Um, there... Start, maybe? Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just takes a bit. Yeah, you're resetting. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Start. Um, so it's, uh, this was posted on October 28th by Antonio Corpus Cuenza, a.k.a. Corpiano. Okay, so, uh, um, this plan A did not work. The only instructions he gives, the four hearts represent the elements that you must protect. Ah. That's it. That is the only instructions. I think I know what's up. <laughs> Shielding color by some home brewer. Uh, Corpiano. Uh, so this is the only game, uh, 2600 game he's ever made. Um, so it's his first one. Uh, he has made some Amstrad CPC games. Um, this is available in the Atari Age forums. Uh, he posted it without any instructions. Then two days later, he said, Four Hearts represents the elements you must protect. <laughs> 2600 just gave it away. I love it. <laughs> I figured it out, but he was like, he hit me up. At the oh, same time. you need to change the col shield color with the fire button and block the skull. Yeah. Yeah, so I figured that out. And now it's maybe needs some scaling. Oh, I, I played this a little, just enough to... Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Yeah, because it's in the range. You have to get it in the range. It's blue, red, yellow, green. So there's only four. 
Okay, so it's it's scaling a bit better now. It's getting up there. Yeah. Yeah, 2600 says, I played it a bit. It's a pretty cool concept. Yeah, it's a matching action. Oh, Whoa. see. 1200. Well, you can't change as you move. Which Somebody is type rough. in 1200 for A. Yeah. A 1200 or 1200A. Um, two people suggested a paddle for input, and he responded, Thanks for all your comments. I will keep them in mind if a future review happens. So this is one of those uh, people who just, here's my game. Stop. It's done. You you play it if you want. <laughs> he doesn't. He didn't go for suggestions, which you know people. Some people are really confident with their with their game playing, with their game uh, developing, or they're just like, it's a practice game. This is my first twenty six hundred game. It is what it is. I don't want to make it complicated. It it is feature complete. It's got score. You can die. There's enemies. There's some there's some skill involved. Thank you so much, RC70. Ah, 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 ah. ah. Nick a time, friends. And if you're good about memorizing... You That's can, the trick you, to this game. It's yeah. like green, blue... Oh, green, yellow? Green, yellow, blue, red. So eventually it's going to get fast enough that you're going to have to go... Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. That's oh. the 1300. Well, that's better. Yeah, yeah, we got a little bit better. <sighs> and he did include a reset, so that's good with the button. It's pretty chill at the beginning. <laughs> it's really chill. And you can't change colors while you're moving. Correct, which makes it extra hard. And you can't press it very fast either. <laughs> no. You have to kind of bap, bap, bap. So there is an RNG element to this. Oh yeah, you don't know what color you're getting. Because if you're like happen to be mapped really close when it gets really fast. What is it? Green. Yellow, blue, red. Green, yellow, blue, red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a it's always tough, man. Dude, I'm all about the calculations, dude. I started, I started running. Oh my I, God. I, I stopped playing like my online games, and I'm running a D and D campaign with my friends now. And fuck, is that so fun? Offline games. <laughs> yeah, pen and paper. Just having to like read up all this stuff. I've been playing 3.0, which is um, what I used to play as a kid. And I looked up the the books online because I kept them all. It's like a hundred and twenty dollars per book now because it's like. You know, you can download them all yeah, for that... free, but also there's something about having a book, you know. I'm sure you could get them like at a garage I can't sale move for nothing and but switch fast enough on some of those. But yeah, Sorry. man, that's my shit just having to like read about stuff, calculating like AC and all that 1200 stuff. 1200 for me. Thank you very much, RC70. So how many people do you have uh, attend your right now we got three going, that's which good. is great and we have a fourth kind of swing character at the moment. Um, and he's he's this crazy guy who's like this. He's he's a musician and he's probably an alcoholic, so he's always plastic whenever I see him. So he's playing a chaotic evil character, <laughs> oh, which boy. is perfect because like during the first one he was so drunk he couldn't like he was like I'll just fight them and we're like dude. And then at a certain point he's like sorry bro I just realized that you you actually put up a lot of effort into this. No I'll just, <laughs> it's just, it's just which is hilarious. It's so good. Oh my god. I. I would want to, ch I would suggest if he does an update that you can change while you're moving. Yeah, it would definitely. It's so frustrating. Well, it would make you, it would, it would mean we could go a lot farther with this game. You that know? was terrible. Yeah. And, and make it so the switching is a little bit faster that you can actually, you don't have to. Well, yeah, because now, because it's tough because it's like, you want to feel like you could physically do it when there's At actually some stuff that you probably couldn't. Yeah, because you can't go. Choo, 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 choo. But yeah, man, it's fun just like writing maps and like coming up with shit. I could totally like see myself um, designing like an RPG in my later in my life, man. Oh yeah. Because I've just played all of them. I love them so much, and like so much work has to go into them. Oh yeah. Especially nowadays with 
so much uh, dialogue and story. Oh, it would be. Yeah. Yeah, you'd only get like, you know, I, I think I would want to do like one, you know, really good one. And I don't know if it's something you could do forever because it's, as you said, it's like so much work. Yeah. I mean, you could go retro and do like an NES one. Yeah, or... I'd probably want to do like an isometric, like kind of like action RPG or pause and play style and then be be very story oriented with lots of branches of possibilities. Mm, with... That's when it gets complicated is when you have branching. Yeah. It's like, now I have to write 10 stories. <gasps> it just... There's not enough time. Well, yeah, I just got lucky, right? Like, honestly, yeah. me going up there was just had more to do with, like... True story. Who is the dev of this game? This is, um... is oh, a new guy. Corpiano? Is Corpiano, That's yeah. That's what I supposed to... Corpiano. To the punch. Uh, Antonio Corpas Cuenza. As I mangle his name. Do you think it's good to pronounce people's names in... With the... With kind of the wording of the uh, original language or is it better to pronounce them in english it's like hard very straight ahead you like kinda, if i said it's antonio corpas cuenza yeah and that's like that's you want, if you want to sound like brad pitt from inglorious bastards oh, you know that's over the top that <laughs> one makes me crazy his accent but then you can you can kind of hit a middle ground where it's antonio corpas cuenza and then you can go over the top. Oh, dude, I kind of agree with RC70, unless the speaker already has another accent. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, like if you have it naturally. But yeah, I don't think you should be. Like, you shouldn't over be. Over the top. Yeah, you know. Also, it's always like, you know, the... Bongiorno. Yeah. It's like... That's that's too far away from it. Maybe in the middle is, yeah. is good. Like Antonio Corpus Quenza. Yeah, if you if you catch yourself doing a parody imitation then while you're saying it, it's like okay, <laughs> you know, you're Apu trying to, you know, like that's, yeah, then it's bad. Right? Then then, it, then it's in like danger territory because I have to say all of these names and it's like yeah, some dude. of them are French, but and... that's called like one of the great great actors of our time just doing his fucking work, man. Oh, Hugh Laurie's, Hugh Laurie's American accent. I mean, but that's his job. Spot it's on. like... Um, I bet a lot of people who only knew House and then saw him in other things were like, what? What? What is this The joke, the classic accent? thing was the showrunner when he auditioned, Hugh Laurie came in and left and basically he didn't know Hugh Laurie and he turns to his like casting director and goes, it's nice to have a real American doing this part. And the, oh, and the, and the so casting funny. director's like, have you seen like his work black to adder and uh <laughs> the other 10 shows he's but been but that's in? how well he just transformed into it you know oh, so brilliant amazing. fucking actor yeah and i the first three seasons of that show are so good and then i think yeah. after that it starts to like dip a bit but seasons one two and three are killer yeah i watched from the beginning to the mm -hmm. end um really really good and the last couple seasons are like they're just searching for some plot lines here to, well, yeah, to play with. And it's, well, I think it's a beautiful example of why American television fails as a long-term medium. Yes. Because it requires the characters to remain the same. But, like, after you perform surgery on yourself, <laughs> like, I think you would want to catch yourself for a second and go, wait, maybe I need to change. But if he <laughs> changes and becomes self-actualized, you don't have a show. So it's that that's, yeah. like, the tension, I think, of House, which is sort of the tragedy. It's like, well, what... What more can happen that'll change this human being? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, it's it's quite a character. Um, so this is Bass Fishing Tournament. This is a 2019 Ooh. work in progress by Anthony Quinlan, aka 2600, who is joining us in the chat. Hopefully, still here. Um, you have to have a multi-season plan to pull it off to doing multiple seasons. Yeah, I think once you make it through the first season and know that you're going to get renewed for an unknown number, yeah, you have to. You should actually plan your arc well beforehand, but make sure it works as a one season. But it's like a carryover from an old style of television writing, which was that, what is it, not serialized episodic? Mm. You know, where it is about, like, because Friends and all those sitcoms were about sort of having a premise, keeping it the same, you know? And it's a product of, like, Friends a TV medium. a very medium. slow arc, though. It's really, totally. really slow. And But it is that thing where it's like if you're Reset watching... Button. Totally. Every, every show. Reset. And it's because of the medium of television. But now yeah. with Netflix, it's like serialized and that's what we want. It's like you're going to... It's gonna... wonderful. It's amazing. Like and people watch it from beginning to the end. There's no 
There is no such thing as a repeat anymore. No. You repeat it if you want to watch it. Because, yeah, you used to just, like, turn on, like, Fox or whatever, and there'd just be a Simpsons episode or, like, a, oh, yeah. or, like a That 70s Show or a Friends or, like, you know. You can jump in any All in the episode. family if you go even back, you know, yeah. and, and that was what, because it was, like, you had to assume that this was the first time someone ever saw your show. Yeah. And so it had to tell a complete story versus imagine, like, tuning in, like, season four of Breaking Bad. You'd be like, what the <laughs> fuck is this thing? <laughs> yeah. You know? Here you go. Oh, sick. Or Archer, too. Yeah. Like, Archer is, is like, you can't really jump in in the middle. You can't even jump in in the beginning of a season sometimes. It's like, yeah. what is, what is, ha who are these characters? This is strange. Okay. So this is bass fishing, and it's gone through a lot of iterations. I'm stoked. And I have been playing it to death, actually. <laughs> Whoa. So, oh, is this me? So this looks, hey. Calm down there. Um, I'm so excited. No, no. Uh, so he hasn't started yet. This is one of the best title screens of an Atari 2600 game I have ever seen. Like, this is just the title screen. It's got your little guy fishing. It's got a waterfall. It's got a sunset. Some very long cars driving yeah. on the road. It's got a little picnic area there. Yeah, the... the... Gorgeous, gorgeous. The, the, the last thing I'll say on the, on the last topic was um, mm. the, I love the finale of Community where they sort of parody what shows become, where they just imagine that, like... Oh, I didn't see the last season. The last season is... Well, the last episode is very very special because they okay. all... It basically... Ah, ah. Yeah, man. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. Um, this That is an excellent title screen. Yeah, I, I would say one of the best title screens of any 2600 games. Like, there's so much animation going on multiple levels of it and great graphics okay so this is first posted october 27th uh this build is from november 3rd it's pretty fresh a couple days old yeah three days old it's a 32k dpc plus game obviously with a title screen like this it's going to be a massive game no matter what um this is his first game he's wow. ever made for the 2600 um, you can download this right now in the Atari Age forums. Um, so let's get into it. Fuck yeah. Hold on. What so you're catching fish. Okay, can I... Do I... Oh, I, I just bring this up and I grab my fish. And yep, and you bring it up. Bring it up to me. And the bigger the fish, the bigger the reward. And is there like a time limit? Or something? Uh, yep, the time limit's on the right. And I just... Um, how much the fish is worth uh, is on the it left. It looks like the lower you go, the better the fish. And Whoa, also, buddy. and if you run into another smaller fish, the not. smaller fish goes on Ooh, the hook. Dude, so okay, you kind of got to avoid up. this other fish as you're bringing it up. Dude, I'm going for that big fucker right there. Yes. Oh, God, but look how slow it is. <laughs> it's, Holy that one's worth 200 points. I'm getting this fucker. This is my fish. So, gameplay, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, you need to catch as many fish as you can in the provided time before the weigh-in. No, oh my god, oh my god, this is getting scary. Oh god! <laughs> yeah, you have to like just tap, just oh, just let go I gotta, like... Oh, come on, there you go. Oh no, <laughs> no, but no, I lost him. But the big fish is still him. there. The oh, big fish oh, he's is still, still there? there? Thank god. Okay, hey, hey buddy, hey buddy, hey buddy. Oh, There you go. 180 to 380. Oh, yes. I don't know fish. if that was really worth it, honestly, because these little ones. Um, the deeper you snag a fish, the more they're worth in weight. Whoa, you're right. This bass fishing is badass. <laughs> I never <laughs> thought it would be good. Never thought you'd utter that sentence. However, bigger fish are stronger and more forceful, making it no easy task to land them at your boat. I just learned that. Hell yeah. You must land the fish in your boat in order to receive the waypoints. Achieving a score of 1,800 or greater will allow access to level 2. <sighs> oh. So you're at 520. You're about halfway through because the guy has to I'm gonna just grab move one his boat smallish ones. across the screen. You know, Because I don't know <laughs> if that big fucker was really worth it. I wasted a lot of time on that guy. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, so you have four minutes total uh, in, in each level. Controls and status bars. Joystick fire reels in the lure. Reset. Return to the title screen. Left and right is direction. Right difficulty switch is the real sound. Ooh. Never heard that before. Never turned that on. Cool. We'll keep that on. It's not too bad. Uh, status bar on the left is the force slash tension. 
and or points, I guess. The status bar on the right is the timer. That's the overall uh, day timer. Um, pro tip. There are rumors of a big old lunker around the depths, oh. but rarely pops his head out. Whoa. If you see him and have the chance to snag him, go for it. He's worth his weight. Whoa. Although he will put up a decent fight, so be prepared. It won't be easy. Dude. Bass fishing for life. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I played this like immediately when it came out because I saw it and was like, wow, what an amazing title screen, great graphics and everything. Um, and I was playing the hell out of it, getting higher and higher scores. And then I was like, okay, this is, this is more of a math game. You've got a certain amount of time. You've got four minutes. Each of the fish are worth a certain amount of points. And each of them take it X minutes to bring up to the surface or X seconds. Yeah. So you're like, okay. What tier do you go for? That's the question. Yeah. Which fish is worth the most? Because you can totally calculate it. How long did you do any calculations? I did all the calculations. Fuck. Yes, you did. <laughs> God damn it, I can't Cause wait. Because I, I was like, oh, I gotta do these guys. Dude, this is my shit, man. This is why RPGs are badass, because you get yeah. to think about this stuff. Yeah, which sword is best for the price? Like, yeah, what which technique? enchantments do you need to put on it? How do I want to play this? Oh, let's see. Yeah. So you got thirteen ninety five. I'll give you another time to play because I'm gonna run down the calculations. Okay. So you almost got there. You got thirteen ninety five. I'm going to try, like, the tier, maybe. I'm going to, so 50. <clears throat> 100. Uh, 2600 says, he's here. Um, thanks. I was trying to go for something different with the title screen rather than the static screen. Yeah, it's one of the most impressive title screens um, uh, on any game. I can see this game being nominated for work in progress. It's a great fucking game, man. <laughs> Just... I never would thought I'd be into bass fishing. I'm not <laughs> gonna lie. I. And I never thought it'd be so. Bottom tier is ninety. Like the bottom, bo second, uh, second, second, second to last. Second, I shouldn't say bottom, bottom, because like second to last, second to last, fourth tier. That's my old one. <laughs> uh, yeah, the bottom those, ones. Those top ones don't seem worth it. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so I'm gonna run down what they each of them are worth. And how long it takes to, to catch one. Oh, God damn it. Nice <clears throat> and I have caught a lunker. Whoa, what's it worth? Uh, it is worth uh, 800 points. Yeah, that seems like it's totally worth it. Which is quite it. a lot. It okay. takes forever, though. Oh, my God. It takes forever. Um, so the fish scores. Um, the top one is worth five points. So, so it's such a small amount. Um, fish number two is 20, then 50, then 90, then 200, and the then... 50 might be a really good call. Yeah. And then 800 for the oh. big, big one that uh, you haven't seen yet. So he's pretty rare. Um, oh, and I calculated the maximum speed you can pretty much catch each of the fish, right? Because you need to do that. Um... So f the top fish takes about one second to reel in. Like, if you do it perfectly, yeah. match it up every time. But you can't do it in a second because oh. the fish is random spots. might be at the beginning, might be at the end. Your boat moves as well, like across the screen. So you can't... There's the lunker right there. And you do have enough time to do it. It is hard as hell. Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah, man. <laughs> Look how slow it goes. Look at this guy. Lunking it up. <laughs> Oh, uh, I just dropped it. <laughs> it's like not. You gotta just it. barely let go of the button when you do that. Okay. okay um, fish number two takes three seconds to reel in. Like the fastest you can do is three seconds. I'm just oh, you passed that fish. I'm just stoked to get to like do this, cause like seriously, this is. Will there be enough time? Uh, yes, there is. If he does it, pretty much perfectly, but you do get caught up on fish. And now there's fish all over the place, and he's catching tiny ones and wasting his time. Well, no, Actually, I you do have to reset that one. That's know? what I thought was, was like, you know what? Like, rather than like, you know, rather than worrying about popping, you know what I mean? Rather than yeah. just chasing that, I'm like, if I end up like trading it, just send that one up. You, you know? got to, you got it. You have to let it go. That was my feeling. It's like, cause otherwise, cause see now, no yep. problem. Just gonna bring that guy up. Got it. There you go. And now you passed him. Oh, that is the one thing. Oh, I didn't you know that. You can't let his head touch. 
Ah, too it's bad. On the Sorry, that's not in the instructions here, but that well, is. Well, you know, we're learning. Yeah. We're uh, learning. So, fish number three takes five seconds to bring up. Fish four takes nine seconds. Yeah, see, I would have won if I got him. Yeah, you would have. Done. Rip. And, and you're really close. Uh, fish number five takes 19 seconds. And the lunker takes a minute. About 63 seconds. Dark. Okay. With a minor letting out of a reel and plus catching the top fish once because you have to catch the top fish and move them out of the way a bit. Um, so I was able to get it in like 63 seconds, about 60 seconds. So you got 1375. I can't remember what your last score was. Yeah, it's reset. You can press the button to start, I think. Um, so... 1375. Erlen, thank you very much, RC7. Yeah, thanks, dude. So I calculated it, um, say you're aiming for 2,400 points yes. in, in the first four minutes. Um, the number of fish that you would have to catch, level one fish, would be 480 of them. Rough. <laughs> At a half a fish, a half, a, half second per fish. It's not possible. Um, it's like literally not possible because it takes a second to get them. Um, so you really, you wouldn't even make it. Um, you would only be able to get 240 fish, would only give you 1,200 points. It's literally not possible to get to the next level by catching that small fish. Um, fish number two, um, you'd have to catch 120 fish at 2,400 points at two seconds per fish. And I calculated it takes three seconds minimum to get those fish. So you're not gonna make it. So the first two levels, write them off. Don't imagine. Don't yeah. even bother with them. There, you're not gonna get enough fish to to make it. Fish number three to get 2,400 points. Um, you have to catch 48 of them at five seconds each. Now I calculated it takes minimum five seconds to catch the level three fish. So you could do it, but you have to catch 48 of them. And that's a lot of fish to do over and over again at a perfect rate or so near thinking, perfect rate. Does that mean tier four is probably the way to roll? Um, tier four, um, you have to get, you have to catch 26 fish and it takes about nine seconds each, um, which it takes nine seconds perfectly. If you bring it up straight from catching them straight up to your boat with no hesitation in between. And no reeling out too much. And it's fairly easy to dodge all the fish, because you can reel that guy up fast enough. So if you want a, an easy um, way to get to level four, I would definitely go for level four fish. <laughs> um, if you want, but you do have to do a lot of them, 26 of them, which is quite a lot. But it is easier to do. Now, fish five, you only have to get 12, 12 fish, but they're harder to get past, especially the top one. Um, um, and you only have to do, and it takes 20 seconds per fish. <laughs> well, I thought I'd wait while I get That's that. That's true. While, get a while I wait for, five points. wait for my like big guy to come by, you know? There you go. But you can move your, your hook over to him. That's true. And that'll... Uh, well, you're already going to beat your old score now that you get some tactics going. Yeah, now that we did some math. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. So These little ones are so fast. But they just fuck with you, man. Um, so I calculated also with the Lunker, um, you only have to catch three of them to get 2,400 points. But... It's hard. 80 seconds per fish. Um, and I got it in about 60 seconds. So so I said, based on how long it ta takes to catch each fish versus points, the Lunker is definitely the winner, even at 800 points. But odds are against you to getting a Lunker more than once in a game. So if you see one, go for it. If there's no Lunker, the next best thing would be to go for fish five, the bottom one, as you get an ever so slight time advantage. The top two are a complete waste of time, and they're really there to get in your way. Ah. Oh. 17. So close. Yeah. Do one more. 
Will I finish uh, my sure, reading? Yeah, man, one more. Seventeen twenty-five. Okay, new tactic, motherfuckers. That one is harder. Remember, don't go all the way to his head. He will, um... Oh, fuck. <laughs> but you got him up a little ways. Yeah, you kind of have to reset all the fish a little bit. Um, the top two are completely a waste of time. You can't catch them fast enough, and you'd have to catch 120 to 480 oh. of them perfectly. If you could catch them fast enough. The next two down, fish three or four, are fine to get. But again, you have to catch a lot of them perfectly. You have to catch 26 to 48 of them in a row perfectly. No! That's, that's a lot. So it seems the best strategy is go for fish five the whole time. As you only have to get 12 of them. And they have a slight time advantage. And then head for the lunker if you see them. But, like, I haven't even been able to get one. Because, like, I'm about to... Like, it's so hard with that top fucker, it is. man. With fish five, bypassing that top one. Oh, like, see, even fish four is hard. It's it's challenging. You have to go the right direction in the right timing. So, and then I said, now, let's calculate an absolute perfect score based on this. Let's say you only get one lunker in a game, and you're able to snag him pretty much perfectly at 60 seconds. That leaves you three more minutes to catch fish five as many times as you can. One lunker plus three minutes of fish five equals 2,600 points. That's if you do a perfect game. Let's say you get really lucky and get two lunkers. Two lunkers plus two minutes of fish five equals 2,800 points. So if all my calculations are correct, the top score in the game is somewhere between 2,600 and 2,800 points. And he replied, this is brilliant. A lot more detailed than the notes I've been uh, using to work out the balance. Did I get him? It looks like I have a decent risk versus reward based off your calculations, which was one of the most surprising things that he said he didn't really do this of in depth of calculations to do the risk versus reward but he was able to get a really well balanced game by just kind of guessing pretty much an educated wow. guess i was like really astounded so one thing i'm starting to learn too is a stream sort of has a yes. natural like thing to it you can, so like yes. you see i can kind of like now you with... got it yeah this is exactly the method i do when I'm playing. Oh, but yeah. no. You gotta avoid that fish. Well, you didn't waste too much time there, but... You'll get 1,800 if you do that tactic. For sure. It's all about them big fish. So I figured out that when he only had one level going. Now he's added a second level if you get to 1,800 points. There's no level 3 yet, but he's gonna add a level 3 into it as well. I don't know what the points... I'm guessing he's just gonna double that and you have to get to 2,600. Fuck. Maybe. Um, Bass fishing for life. I've been thinking of making the score color solid rather than a gradient. Um, there it looks good because it really punches oh. through um, the color. But on the title screen, I've noticed it's, it's a little harder to read, so you might want to change it to the title screen. But there, I don't mind the score too much. It's kind of nice that it's a continuation of the water water theme. Try to catch them while going up, never while going down. Yeah, that is that is true. Unless you're really good at catching them going down, it's you can sometime wa sometimes waste less time. You need to get one more bottom fish. Uh, but he's almost to the end, but I think you can make it. No. Oh. oh, you can let them go, I guess, yeah, if the head of it is there. Oh, I don't think you can make it. Maybe, maybe... Maybe. Oh, so close. Rip. Do you want to do one? Yep. Um, then you can read out all the information about the programmer. Sick. I'm super stoked. Where's this guy at? Bass fishing. So, message from Anthony. Hi, James. Just a quick rundown of who so, I am so, for the stream. So 1685, FRC70, if you could type that in. Name is Anthony uh, Quinlan. I live in um, uh, Adelaide, uh, South Australia. So now you have to do it all with an Australian accent. Oh, no pronounce way. His name. We ain't doing oh that. I was distracted. 35 years of age. I'm a uh, boil, 
boiler maker slash steel uh, uh, fabricator for so, the trade for yeah. 18 years. That's a I don't know trade. what a boiler maker is. I think boilers like, are like what they like use. making a boiler? Yeah, I think boilers are like the thing they use for water heating. Oh. Um, Hi, I'm playing. Nice, nice kitties. Freaking Pixel only ever wants love when you're busy. <laughs> I know. He's like, oh, he's playing a, a very intense timed game. Um, oh. uh, he started hacking Atari and other old school games, and he grew up um, with during the 2000s with a Hi. hex editor. Hi. Hex editors Hi. are so great. Hey, yeah. Oh, uh, both cats are coming down. Hi, zero cats. professional programming background. Get this out of the way. In Respect. 2008, he started delving into Atari Basic, making small shooter like games for myself as a mm. hobby. Longer. This is mid. He was an admin for an Australian Arma 2, which is a military simulator server, oh. and a mod developer coding in ASL which is Armara scripting language. The language oh. is uh, dot .sqf, um, uh, like yet more of a uh, C-like syntax. It's a breed of its own. Thank God you know that stuff. I don't know any of that stuff. Um, 2011 to uh, 2015, he was a mod developer for the mind test community coding in Lua and snippets of C++ for map generation was a oh. great way to learn um, cool. some Lua. In 2015 to present, most of my hobby time is devoted to 2600 development, as I like the fact that I can create a game from start to finish. Yeah, just one person. That is a huge uh, benefit. And his uh, future plans are more 2600 development and maybe re-engineering into the 6502 ASM books um, so I can not only get the most out of the Atari 2600 but also play around with some Nintendo and C64 homebrew. Yeah, a lot of systems use the chip that is in the uh, 2600. So if you program in 2600 assembly, you can learn a lot of other um, systems at the same time. At least in assembly, not graphics or sound or anything are totally different on each of those so this one you have to catch that fish ah you have to catch that top fish because it doesn't give you enough time oh my god i will land it though i hope i want i want to see it but i'm wasting a lot of time that's the issue kind of showing oh and i went down too far Well, damn. Ah! So you kind of have to float your hook a little bit. Oh. Hey, I don't know how you do this. I'm going to have to wait till he comes around the other side. There's two Easter eggs, apparently. I've never seen them. I have no idea. Dude, if you want to let us know how to do them, <laughs> we'd fucking love to do them for the show. You're just going to have to give us some hints. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't want to give it away. Ooh, yeah, good point. But if you want to give it away... Ooh, ooh, this is a good one. <laughs> I got him up really high. That's what you have to do, is time it perfectly so you get him on your hook just as he's passing. Oh, that was way too low. Down too low! Lunker is hard! This is one is super easy to find, but give us some hints, man. Because we're, we're also trying to do a show and all this stuff, so it's always tricky. I don't have time. He's going to go. Damn it. I think he goes down like no matter what. Oh, damn. oh I thought I was gonna get him. See a terrible score because I was going for the lunker. That's the problem. Yeah, if, that's the thing is like in theory it's great. In practice, whew. Different story. I think the best that I did was when I focused mostly on tier four. Yeah, because he's quick and fast. Because in practicality, you know. And then I kind of took a break on Tier 5 whenever I wanted to. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Man, I've told James already, but I'm flirting with this, like, cat in the neighborhood. This Because I got mice in my house, so I want to get rid of these mice. But I don't want to, like, um, you know, I've been trying to catch them and stuff. But there's this cat that what? I've been giving treats to. And he'll just come into my house now whenever he wants to. And he'll just, like, tour around. I've been trying to show him, like, little areas where, like, the mice are. And, like, this week, uh, basically, like, um, on Monday, I was barbecuing outside. And uh -oh. he was super into the smell. <laughs> yeah. And then he came in and was just, like, totally happy to, like, hang out at my house now. And he has no collar or anything. But he's super handsome looking, so. But it's just very cool to have, like, a neighborhood cat that's just, like, into hanging out with me, you know? 
Yeah. It's just, um, and he fucks off and does his own thing, and I leave the door open whenever he's there, but it's getting a bit cold, so... But how is the mice situation now? Have you, like, uh, they're scared to death, man. Like you haven't seen them yet, and they haven't been I will... given any mouse uh, signs? No, I mean, I still see one every once in a while, but I'm, I can tell, like... Like this last time I brought, I'm called his turtle because he's got like that's he's got this like turtle like shell um, oh, uh, yeah. sort of like thing. So that's at least the name I've given to him. But the cool thing is, is whenever um, uh, he gets in the house now, he starts. To, you can see that apex predator eyes light up every <laughs> once in a while. Oh, yeah, and I so. showed him underneath like the the um, uh, the couch, and he was uh. like fucking ready to go. So I'm like, <laughs> ooh, it's just a matter of time. But then I was like sitting on my couch thinking about it, and I was like, you know what's probably gonna happen is like ah. most cats, he's probably not gonna actually kill it. He's gonna give it to me half killed, and I'm gonna have to finish him off. Which Quite is, possibly. Which if he's is, well fed, he, he'll do that. Right? I really would be, yeah, but I think he'll do it out of, like, pride, you know, and he'll, like, be like, here's the mouse, what do you think of it? And that's going to be kind of sad. Psst, 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 psst. Can you uh, yeah. coax him off Hey, there? pick some, buddy. Buddy. Oh my God. Pick some. We're catching bass fish, man. Some serious shit is going on. Yeah. Um... But yeah, it's been pretty. It's he's. It's nice that he that he'll just kind of come around the house though now. You know, um, yeah. I love cats so much, but I also have all these plants that are not great for cats either. Mm, yeah. So I That's wouldn't. Very dangerous. It wouldn't be good to leave the cats like unattended at my house. So I got no issue with him being there because I just keep an eye on him and and make sure and and the. Um, but, but it's funny, like cats also too, man. Like he just started like going for the cords really quickly. I'm like, buddy. Really? I'm like, buddy, that's my headphones. I need those. <laughs> these fucking headphones I own, cats just love them. I don't know what it is about these headphones. It maybe has a flashing light or something that's red. I think that might be the problem is that it lights up red when it needs charging. And I think oh. the cats see the red and they're like, Fuck, Maybe. Man, that's my shit. I'm going to. Oh, they like playing with little cables and cords. It's super fun for them. Yeah. You can't. Ooh, 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 ooh. See, if you time it, you, you have to get them from above, actually, these fish. Um, if you go below, it's it's just as dangerous. You have to time it when you drop your... Yeah, and I'll just grab a little bat. one. See, yeah. you can do it without him dropping down. Dude, I'd personally what I just doing. grab a top one before your time runs out, dude. We'll oh, see. I see. <laughs> we'll see, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was that close. It the tight, score was man. that close. I wish the timer was when he was hits the edge of the screen, but it's not. Thank you. But it really oh, made... oh yeah, I made it to second level. Shit. So he goes back across the screen now. And what do you gotta and... get to to get to level three? Uh there's no level three yet, so mm. Oh, so now you just got like You just gotta get your max score on level two at this point. But yeah, it makes me think about like the nature of like animals, you know, like with this cat, you know, there's no, there's no way you can tell a cat what to do. It's like you kind of flirt with the cat, you bring them around to kind of deal with like your problems, you know. It's like a mutual relationship in a way. Uh, and it always has been with yeah. uh, cats and mice and, they're, and food stores, they're storage. Fucking, they're basically apex predators that we bring into our house who will just fucking murder and massacre like anything smaller than them. But because we give them food, they're they're chill. Okay. Hey, buddy. Okay, that's enough. Dude, fucking pixels clawing at our camera. <laughs> Definitely wants attention. Oh, oh, buddy, buddy, you know what we'll do? We'll put you right here. You're not gonna stay, but we'll try it out. <laughs> we'll try. The only it thing out. you can do with cats are like close the door on them, and and then hopefully they stay out of the trouble that you're keeping them out of. But even then, they'll be like scratch, 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 scratch. I want in the room. I want in that room that you're not allowing me into because that's their territory. Right? Oh, he says there's a level three, but he can't be accessed until the color banding's right. Oh, okay. There is no one in here. That's good news. Oh, look at this fucking guy right here. So I'm guessing it's 30. Um, if it's 1800 for the first level, I'm guessing it's 36 for level to get to level three. Dude, Pixel's a lion. It's oh, lion. yeah. He's got a huge mane. He's ready to kill. He's the king. He knows what's up. That just smells of Activision. Nice job. Oh, yeah. It's true, Gorgeous. dude. These like, colors and everything. The... And the little sunset. Psst. What are you doing? Yeah, I'll keep an eye on him. Don't worry. He'll, uh, 
Yeah, and, and it got a little bit darker on this level. So he's fishing, fishing in the dark. Like you could make it even darker and turn the water like almost black and the fish had little eyes or something. Um, but probably not. Just make it really, really dim waters yeah. as it gets harder and harder. Psst. Okay, dude. Oh my god. Pixel, I'll tell you what, buddy. You are going outside. <laughs> yeah, that's alright. I have to do that three times in like a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's too much, eh? I'm out. Oh. Oh. You're pretty uh, lucky to be able to pick him up like that. <laughs> he would skin somebody else alive <laughs> Yeah. if he didn't know you as well as he does. That's a good point. Yeah, because seriously, I just pick him up like a yeah, little... Yeah, you don't know how privileged you are to be able to do that. Yeah, me and Pixel have bonded hardcore over over like the, this this like time period. 31. I'm not going to make it to the 36. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Dude, I'd buy this shit too, man. This is oh, very fun. you got to get more levels up in this, though. I mean, I yeah. think that'll happen naturally, but ah. you could scale this shit as, as, as far as you want to go, man. You could just add 100 points each time and see how far people can get. You know, 1,800, 1,900, 2,000, you know, and see. That fish, and I'm at the 36, which should be. Damn it! Need to get this one out of the way. No! No! I have to wait for it to come around. Dude, you could do two player of this shit. That would be badass. Oh, yeah, just yeah. Two yeah. hooks, just. There we go. Come on. There we go. So supposedly I should be able to get to level three with that yeah if he makes it the same which he wow. should what a good game man so i think he said level two has sped up the fish a little bit it at least reversed the stream yeah so super fun game it's it, you look you think about it you look at it, you go how can that be fun you're just catching fish bringing up fish over and over but there's a lot of tactics to it it's like dodging so easy, fish man. and and RC's they change all the time Thank you, RC70. Yeah, keeping keeping score. Be because as you catch them, they reset, so the pattern changes, right? Unless you never, never, ever touch um, the other fish as you bring up the bottom oh, one. I said larger fish on weigh-in screen after level two. After level two. So the fish. Gets... Oh, so that fish there is bigger. Oh, okay, that's cool. Oh, I didn't, I didn't notice dude. how big the fish was on the. That's classic. That'd be funny if you have this so massive. So level three will be like massive, huge fish. That's very cool. Great. It's just really, really cute, tiny, detailed characters and and yeah. and animations there. It's really great. So you can see. I don't think I'd do this too much on the show, but this now that is we're the John Carpenter version. <laughs> so you can see what everything is made of. Um, the purple is playfield, which are four pixels across. And then um, player one is yellow. And this is like infrared, man. Player That's zero, cool. player zero is red. And player one is yellow. And you can see you use the balls or missiles. Uh, the pink and the green little dots there. Oh, yeah, because the little divots of uh, of grass kind of getting in. Oh, and and the and the yellows you use for the cracks in the dirt. It's just really really well done. And and like even looking at uh, at the fish, great little fish. And they've got little gradients on it. And the guy you can see at the top, he has a little animation when you reel it in. Elegant design, my friend. Honestly, very very. It's elegant. really nice, and it's very you know. I mean, you could you could animate the seaweed at the bottom if you wanted to, just slowly changing, drifting. Debug colors in play screen. Oh, yes, sure. Um, so all the fish and your guy are the same, which makes sense. And your and your hook is a, a different one. Oh, and there's a little green thing at the bottom. That might there. be where that fucker spawns, man. That's no, just graphics. That's cool. Just overlaying graphics to make the to make it just a little more detailed on the bottom. I haven't memorized what they are, but all that's play field at the bottom. All the purple, and the sun is play field. 
um, and the rest, all the gradients are uh, background colors. So you can change the background color every uh, line. So he's done a real, oh, Lunker. The Lunker. I'm gonna try one more time to get the Lunker just so people can see. Yeah. God, it's cool. Oh, oh. I'm also, I'm up. Here we go. Oh. Um. Oh, that's TIA bets. What am I doing? There we go. I think I can play like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, he's uh, still using the same player. He doesn't flash the hook. I would say flash the hook, but it doesn't matter because sometimes you... Oh, I can't play very well like this. Um, this because sometimes you can get too. all... I, I put all the fish on one level at one point. <laughs> so they all got really flashy. Like, you can see three of them are on the same line there. So he's... he's, um, he's got Whoa. A, He's got it really good. Um, let's see, I can't get past these fish because I've got two on the same plane. You can't have your fish out of order. Yeah, you kind of got to deal. Got to clean gotta... it up when you get the lunker. Which is okay because that gives you some sort of minimal points as you go. Almost it does. Gives you a couple more points. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have to keep it clean for the lunker. side again. I'll catch a couple of fish in the meantime. How about you? There he is, coming around. So what... Oh, get out of here. So as soon as the fish passes, that's pretty much when you have to catch the lunker. Yes. And this is a good... This is get easier enough. to pass this type of fish. Yeah. Oh, God! Nightmare. Yeah. I let go of the button way too long. So hard. See? Ah, oh, see that's how you get past him. You come from the top. And it doesn't it doesn't like um he doesn't you don't drop him? Yeah, you don't drop him. That's what you gotta do then. Yeah, because you yep. were saying coming down from the bottom, but, but it wasn't working. The top is where it's at. Because he actually jumped a bit there. That's good, because the problem is is you were always going back each time you kinda hit him. Let's see what this looks like. You can hit it, yeah. I'm going to have to resign. I don't have enough time to get him up there. No. And you can still spam it. He was fixing this, so you couldn't get the lunker right away. But it still works. <laughs> it still works. Sorry for the flashing, people. I'm just trying to get the lunker. Epilepsy. Flashing warning. switch away so people don't have to stare at that flashing. Yeah. That is brutal. Brutal to look at. He says the easy Easter egg is a different game mode. Oh. But it's not on the late. It's it it shouldn't it shouldn't on the later latest build. It isn't on the latest build? Or it is? I think he said it isn't. Oh. Okay. Hey Arena. Welcome Sn Arena. Snuck in right at the end, buddy. That's awesome to see you. Yeah, he's been playing this game as well Arena. in the forums. I've seen his name. He's been submitting some scores. It's one of those games. He says, play, the, play with console switches to find it for that Easter oh, egg, dude. Oh, okay. Are we frying the VCS? <laughs> um, nope. No, he's, he's just trying to spawn the Lunker, but I think we should try to find that Easter egg instead. Okay. What's he say? Uh, difficulty. Play with console switches to find it. Oh, uh, we'll switch back. Oh, still on there. Okay. Um, yeah. It's not... Game reset's not working. Or the game select switch. Doesn't seem to do anything right away. Not while you're playing either. Um, so let's try the black and white in color. That doesn't have an immediate effect. If you go to black and white. Um, so let's try left difficulty A. Let's reset. Let's try black and white and color on this mode. On the title screen, nope. Uh, you guys can see it too when I'm switching it. So let's do left difficulty A and start a game. Whoa! There we go. 
Oh, well, that's cool. So it changes uh, the graphics and the colors. That's cool, because also it's more recognizable as to what it is. I love that it's like you got to get your whiskey bottle. <laughs> the shoe. Lunker should be a tire. We'll oh, that'd we, be amazing. Let's see what this fucking Lunker is, man. No, we may not get it. It's pretty rare. And this is actually easier because this, the fish are smaller. <laughs> the things are smaller. Yeah. He says, let the fisherman in the boat go across the screen first, then try it. Oh, what? Oh, okay. I think that might have. Like on the title screen? I think that's what he means. Oh, yeah. that's going to take forever. Oh. Glasses brew bottle. Yeah. That, that's probably it, man. Is What's the other one if you wanted to, to let us know? You don't have to, though. It's all good. Well, he says let the fisherman go across, but it's going to take a while. Yeah. Well, that was that's Arena. Oh, Arena. Arena said that. Not... not not 2600 not that arena wouldn't know but i'm just saying that uh, well this is very cool it's a different instruction when the programmer tells you <laughs> yes i don't know what that second one down is what do you think it is a monocle I'm, the glasses no because they already have glasses that looks like fish bones to me the second one? Oh, the first, first one first one's fish bones well, let's see what is this a pocket watch on a chain i mean yeah that's probably it it's hard to say when it's on the hook like it's hard to see what it is on the hook. Like yeah. if I just look at it while it goes by, it's I think kind pocket of like watch. a string, and it's kind of like a round fishing line, is what he says. Oh, that makes okay. sense. Okay, yeah, that's the meta capture. I'm kind of glad that he didn't make, didn't use fishing line, and make a line between you and the boat. Whoa! Did you just catch two? What? One second. Is that a bug? look like I just caught two. I can't catch two again. You, oh, you can catch two. Can you catch all of them? No. Just the top two? That's interesting. That might just be a bug because we're on this, like, you know, we're on, the, like, this sort of different levels and it's like... Oh, no. I could catch... I caught the boot. Let's try the glasses and then the bones. Yeah, you can catch two. But you can't go down. That's interesting. Yes, yeah, it's, the, it's a bug. Oh, it's a cool bug, though. Do you get all the points for everything? I think so. Oh, I caught all three. <laughs> I caught all three. Oh, what the hell? They're changing positions now. Is it? No. It's I just, think it's just no. that one that you didn't catch. Oh, I don't think so I up. don't think you caught them both, but I think it just stopped it when it was there. Uh, yeah. So if you if you catch them all without resetting, without going down, it continues up. Oh no, it doesn't all the time. That's uh, a bug. <laughs> yeah, it's just a buggy cool thing though. It's neat to get to like try it out. So that one, that one worked. Yep. I wonder if the bottle will work too. And the boot. Oh, it's so slow. Let's try and get the glasses. Give me them glasses. Nope. No. No, just some of them work. Fishing line. Very cool. Yeah, it's a bug with the top fish bone. Hey, at 2600. So. Excellent, excellent game. There we go. So let's take a look at uh, what we looked at today. Uh, so we have the uh, Collector Vision Phoenix. Hold that up again. There it is. Beautiful. What a name. Um, I have the 281st. <laughs> Yay! Pressing of it. Yeah. Such a lucky number. For service help, for service help, visit collectivision.com. Made in Canada. That's very rare nowadays. Um, so this is, I think, really, really cool little system that is very expandable into the future. They could um, put a 7800 uh, FPGA and make the adapter for a 7800. They could do a 5200 maybe. Uh, an Intellivision add-on, all the old systems. That would be very exciting. And SD card is badass. Yep, yep. It's got SD card. 
Um, it's got all the controllers that you would probably need, like especially with the um, Super Nintendo, because some game systems have more buttons than yeah. others. So if you have a Super Nintendo and do the mappings right, you got all the you got tons. Damn, you got tons. You got the shoulder buttons. You've got four um, additional buttons, so six total plus the start and select. And you've got that cool um, nice uh, game, man. This one yeah. over here. Sydney Hunter and the Caverns of Death. So that was a nice bonus for ordering this. So you do get, you know, these are usually worth like 60, 70 US. Oh, so you get like... So you get a good value with it on top of it. I think it was two, 225 US for this. Yeah. I think at the level that I contributed. Um, and then we played Power Off, which was super challenging, but good. Super rewarding. We, yeah, we figured it out eventually how to do Too it. Too bad the and... controls weren't just like a little bit more polished. Yeah. Um, Cause that's frustrating in a game, which is all about precision. If you feel like the controls are failing you, it's like, ugh. you don't want to fight the controls ever. No, like, in a game. and it's frustrating when you are standing under a ladder and you push up, you probably should just climb up the ladder. Yeah. But I get it. Like, like it's, you were standing completely in the center of the ladder and nothing happened. Yeah. It up. just felt random. Like yeah. sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. Yeah, d a little disappointing in the controls, but we figured out the angles, but you shouldn't have to do that. Yeah. Um, but great game. Really challenging. Like, hard. Hard, yeah, but, man. but you feel you can do it. And I did. We passed the first level, and I got pretty far in the second level, too. So. Yeah, it seems like that's a game where you do the circle. You kind of, like, go up the yeah. left, come down the right. Not always. There's maybe some but different patterns. A, but, but there's a pattern. Yeah, if you figure out the optimum way to do it. It just takes a bit of time. Uh, second game, Shield and Color, a very simple pattern matching game. Reflexes. Yeah, but it gets like... it gets to a point where you simply cannot pass it. Like we yeah. both got to that point around twelve hundred to thirteen hundred, thirteen hundred, yeah. fourteen hundred, where you physically can't move and change the colors fast enough to catch the next guy. Yeah, it just becomes like if you then it just becomes an RNG thing where it's like this is, yeah. did you happen to be on the right <laughs> one or close to the right one? Maybe it didn't change color and you on the same plane. Totally, which is possible and then yeah. you can maybe get a little bit higher, but that's not fun. You want to feel like there's yeah. there's some possibilities. And cuz even something like Kaboom feels impossible, but it's at the same time it's like there is it's possible still even yeah. though it's impossible in Because a way. Kaboom has such tight precision perfect controls it's all up to the player but it's just so fast but that one if you can't move and change the color at the same time if it did that you, then i'd be like yeah you could scale the, it up the, as far as you want yeah it's on the player as long as you could move and then, and the then right you would have to learn the the pattern and you would yes. see the things you should get over like boom boom boom, shh, boom, boom, boom shh, i think you probably shh, boom, find another wall though you would which would be but at least it would be a bit farther yeah than, um, but I think it has promise if he changes that. If he leaves it as is, which it sounds like he's done. Yeah, it's, then it's hard to recommend, honestly. Yeah, because um, it hits a wall really quick, and we hit the top score. And then it's like, well, do you want to keep trying to do this thing that's just kind of like out of your control? It's not a lot of replay Cause like, value. Because as, as they pointed out, well, I'm not a huge reflex game fan, but like, uh, there's nothing wrong with reflex games. But this no. isn't a reflex game. It's like, it's a like... um uh, Randomization to get a top score reminds maybe. me of the pugs <laughs> yes. you know what i mean where, where you hit a wall and that's it you're done yeah you're you kind of it's not really like yeah and it, i think it's like at a certain point that's like not terrible if that happens yeah but also like you know having some scalability like having some like levels and you know just back to those fundamentals of games and that's that's why feedback's really good and to be able to take feedback and then you know get some beta testers or you know just the general audience and then, because some, some people were recommending a paddle, that's a very fundamental change to gameplay. It's the input is totally different. Yeah. Um, maybe likes the joystick. A paddle would be really cool for that game and pressing the button. Because it is a one button kind yeah. of wheel game. That's all it is. Yeah, scrolling left and right. It's not a, it's a one plane, uh, two dimensional a game. So a paddle would work really well for that. Um, but hopefully he updates it and just changes, tweaks a couple things. It would be great. Like, really good reflex game. Uh, bass Fishing. <laughs> I never thought I would love the game when he put it out. Um, but as soon as, like, immediately, as soon as I started playing, and as soon as you started playing, yeah. your first game, you were like, This is an awesome game. This is amazing. <laughs> it's, it's just got just enough kind of uh, tactics that it's like, yeah, it's, it's great. Oh, 
one eight hundred. Yeah, Yay, to we're them. totally gonna answer that. Yeah, I watched this channel of, of a guy that does answer those. That's hilarious. And his goal is to waste as much time as possible for them. With them. Oh, and he good. keeps track of the timing and he knows their spiel, right? He knows and he's divided up into like six sections. One is the introduction, two is like convincing you, three is getting connected to your computer, and he's got like a fake computer. Um it's so much and he and he has these characters and he puts wigs on. That's and fucking he has hilarious. Back, back stories about this old woman who's like loves <laughs> They're calling about your student loans. Yeah. <laughs> Long paid off. Long paid off. <laughs> yeah, it's either taxes, uh, student loans. That's true. Or someone trying to sell you some shit. Or it could be straight up selling, but yeah, that, I think most of that's long gone. It's all scams. Car warranty is expired. Yeah, the car warranty long. It's mostly scams. In now. in Vancouver, there's a there's a really large Asian population, oh, and yeah. so um, I'll get calls all the time, which will be in Cantonese. Yeah, but what's very me too. interesting is that they'll also have English underneath at the same time. So you'll be listening <laughs> to someone say hello, and it's like Yow. you know, it's like and it's happening at the same time because it's almost like trying to hit like both. And I'm yeah, like I'm like just hey. in case. I'm like this is clearly a program. Program. like pick one at least and <laughs> yeah. it sounds like a machine and i'm That's just like funny that it's saying it both i've never heard that one oh, where yeah. it's both at the same time and what it'll do is it'll start to like program numbers in that are like seem sort of right you know like seven seven eight six oh four like they'll, they'll <laughs> oh, figure out yeah. the area codes and then they'll you'll match like your the... they'll match your area code yeah yeah go to the store buy five green dot visas and give me the numbers yes that's the big scam. My favorite too is like on these all these freaking websites. It's like hot single moms. All we need is your sin number. Like sin who number. would fucking idiot would fall for this? It's like oh yeah, look the hot it, single moms yeah. in my area. Are age like, age verification through sin numbers. Ugh. Oh boy. I'd give me your free <laughs> with a zero charge on your credit card. It's like what? No. Fucking zero for now yeah. and a thousand dollars for next week. But I think that's just a numbers game. A lot of those scams, right? They just like oh, yeah. they just and they've been going forever. So yeah, people are still giving into them because there's dermatologists hate her. Literally, <laughs> yeah. literally a sucky sucker born every minute. Not a sucker, but an uninformed person. Totally. There was an uh, or someone who's just drunk and like you know what I mean. Like that's the other yeah. thing too is there's a online cartoon that does a lot of, a lot of math things and, and very geeky uh like a comic strip um and he calculated that you know there's ten thousand people born every uh every day every year something i can't remember yeah it must be every day yeah ten thousand people born every day so theoretically not even theoretically there's ten thousand people every day that don't know the scam until somebody tells them it's true or they encounter it and get into it so you think about those odds you know it's it's great for them yeah it's just a to, toss of the dice man you know, it's like renew your obamacare well, that wouldn't work up here in canada so we yeah. wouldn't get tricked by a lot of them but they they know that uh, my area code is in canada so they yeah i get texts all the time from like my favorite one is rbc's online banking number i'm like i'm not an rbc <laughs> that's not my bank so i'm pretty sure this is a scam i mean at least get my bank right yeah i unfortunately i'm i like have five banks oh so, they, so you're they've covered i, oh, I yeah. just know that they don't text you I told it. I get Especially the Fido one URL. too a lot. They'll Which be one? like the Fido one because that's my oh. carrier. That's a that's a cell phone company here. Yeah, and they'll just hit me up and be like, "Hey, you got a free gift? Oh to click on this link." And I'm like, <laughs> bunch of, I'm like, no, I'm I not gonna wanna... click on your link." Yeah, there was one the other day. I would, this was one of the first spam ads that I got on my cell phone. I almost never get them, maybe because my phone number, and I've never changed like. I've never changed my phone number in since 1996. I've had yeah. the same phone number, same cell phone number. Yeah. It's, so that's a long time to have a my, cell phone my, number. My other favorite one is this guy, Ty something. Do you ever see that one where he's like, look at me, I'm in my garage with like a Lamborghini oh, God, yeah. and a Mercedes, but I got this way by reading books. Look at all these books. My favorite thing is I watched a video of him and he did, he's like, he's like, do you want to know how I read a book a day? A fast skim. So what I do is I open up the book and you know what? They just have the title page. They have the <laughs> chapter. So I know that if I ever want to read this detailed, I can go back. He's like, so I'm just scanning through real 
fast. Look, I just read a book in three <laughs> seconds. I was like, dude, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I know the, of that guy. I would never got in depth of the what favorite. his thing was. Yeah, and it was so good. The fast skim. I was like, <laughs> and he's like, and then you can do a medium skim, which is where you read the first page of every chapter. I'm like, I mean, technically, oh. that is a summary of what he's going to introduce. You, actually, if you read the first paragraph and the last paragraph, paragraph, that'd not be it's, not too bad. That this was what he was proposing was oh. reading the book, and now he's and he so when he pans over to like the thousand books on his wall, he's read the title page of a thousand books. <laughs> that's terrible. I was like, oh god, that's, that's so good. Terrible. And that's a lot of those guys too. And he's and he's hustling. His thing is he's just like I will. I had mentors that helped me, and I will teach you through my mentorship program. And you have like this like thirty seven day challenge, which like are these just like these tips that he's basically he just gives tips, and it's like I think it's like fucking like thirty dollars a month or something like that. And then you're wow. locked in to like anyways. When you go into de- I, I sometimes like going deep into these things. They're just to interesting. Be like, what. Because because they always look good on the surface, but if you really like go into it, yeah. But I love that. I was my favorite thing: fast skim, medium skim. I'm like you <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> this one I got info dash mobile. Your account statement shows a billing error from our end. You will find instructions to be refunded below, and the and the it's billing dash error dot com. <laughs> the web it's the website with a yeah that's a le- that's a legit website it's like yeah that's my carrier billing dash air Error. i remember signing up for billing dash air mobile <laughs> oh jeez, it's ridiculous um so uh that's it for today uh next episodes on friday wow badass um tanya and darcy day uh 6 p.m so it's a tanya day um let's get the chat back up here there we go um, I don't have anything scheduled yet, but I might take another stab at... Well, Fridays are flex days, though. So. They are, yeah. And I might take another stab at going for, um, or maybe not. I really want my Atari fix, because I love my Genesis controller for playing games. It's Dude, just I like miss that Genesis controller. All around great. Oh, Arena Foot might have one for me. Excellent. Send it to me what on... Might, what, uh, what might you have, to? Uh, a homebrew. A homebrew. Oh shit! Not okay. a not a twenty six hundred okay. or anything. <laughs> so that's what I was thinking. Because he like, keeps track of the homebrews. Right? I was like, Arena, holy shit! I don't know if that's a lot to offer. Yeah. Um, MG. Ooh, that's cryptic. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know if I want to try barnstorming again. That was, that was hard tough, shit. Wasn't it? But I was point five seconds away from getting the patch, so that's oh. the one I might try again. Because I got really, really good at it and really close. So I think I could sew that up and get that done pretty quick. Um, but I have I always keep a bunch in reserve as well. A bunch of games that I want to take a look at. Hell yeah. That I and then I just pick, just get loaded up. Take them off the pile as as I need them. Yeah. Um, so thanks everybody for tuning in, especially twenty six hundred for uh, his amazing bass fishing game. Yeah. Uh, for um, making that. Uh, Arena Foots joined us as well. Ice Bosta, uh, Thrust Twenty Six, Militant Buddhist, RC Seven E, Splendid Nut. Uh, I know the fifth P One L H Four. Yeah, think dude. Of that name P One L H Four. You think that's how you say it? Probably. Yeah, I think honestly that's the best. I mean, P One L H Four. Um, I, I think I think Ice um, Bosta. I think PH4 could be our, our kind of like um, little... Shortened. Yeah, it's just this flows PH4. nicely. Like PH4. It does work really well. The um, 1 and L. Because P14, PH, PH4 feels so, good. What's what, that's what we'll call you, man, next time you're around. I don't, and let us know if that's cool. Pack LED? Pack LED? Pack new LED. New person? Always pack nice LED. to say, see new, new people. Sounds good to me. And I think that's... Oh, what's that orange one? Pull map bot. Oh, that fucker. <laughs> that pull map bot. That was terrible. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, awesome game for sure, man. Oh, thanks. and Repentless VG. There we go. Repentless VG. Thanks for being a subscriber. No, man, thanks and... for fucking making that game, 2600. It's a badass yeah. game. It is an awesome game. It's really, really great. And if you haven't tried it, definitely check out the ROM. Download it and try it. I can it's see a that. a smooth ride, man. I can see that going on a cartridge for sure. And I, I hope it does. That up. That's looks it. beautiful, plays beautiful. Yeah, There's some tactics. Gorgeous. And, man, if you just um, add more levels. Yeah. That's what he's working on right now. Makes sense. Yeah. 
And it was great uh, right out the gate. You, had a, you used to have the boat on the bottom crossing the screen, but you would f hook the fish up to the top and it didn't make much sense. So he switched that almost immediately. That's great, man. Yeah. Um, so thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We're going to see you on Friday. Thanks for hanging out. And then out. I'll be here next Wednesday. Oh, my God. Three hours. That's terrible. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Didn't even notice that. Yeah, and he'll be back here next Wednesday. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.